What is up, everyone, and welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast. Have a great show for you today with my good friend, Brian, who is the owner and creator of Paint Huffer Metal Flake. But before we get into it, let's check out the sponsors, and then we'll get into the show. Simpson Motorcycle Helmets has been my helmet of choice for the last four years. I personally dig the Ghost Bandit the most, but really leaning towards rocking the Mod Bandit for the next year of riding. Really not sure yet. We'll see how that goes. If you guys want to head on over to SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com, you can check out the models and finishes and visor options and see what fits you the best. And also, don't forget to give my guys a follow on Instagram at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. Lexan is my go-to for not only my Bluetooth system, the FT4 Pro, on my helmets, but now my wireless charging solution on the road as well with their WPC QI wireless charger. This is a water-resistant wireless charger for the Ram Mount X grip phone holder. This easy-to-set-up system uses a battery tender-style plug for easy install and will only set you back $64.95 with a two-year unlimited warranty. You can also grab yourself a Lexan WPC and Ram X mount for $110 at lexan-moto.com. And at checkout, drop the Fast Life offer code and save yourself 15% off. And don't forget to give my dudes Lexan a follow on Instagram at LexanMoto. Check them out. With my recent 131 crate engine install, my Thundermax ECM was able to get me an extra 136 horsepower and 146 foot-pounds over the 124 and 131 projected HD numbers with their tuner. The computer is constantly tuning my bike to the elevation and weather conditions as I ride, which gives me the optimal performance all the time. I also run the Thundermax fan for the M8 Touring models. The oil cooler fan was a big help with my 114 and a must with the new 131 motor. Thundermax has your EFI equipped Harley Davidson's covered, and you can check out all these products at shoptmax.com and use the offer code FASTLIFE at checkout, which saves you 10% off. And give these dudes a follow on Instagram at Thundermax EFI. I recently switched all my lighting on my Rogue Glide to Electric Lighting Co. I'm a huge fan of the looks and the improved visibility I get from the Shark Tooth headlight, and I'm digging the five year warranty on the 15 different LED headlight options for your motorcycle. Their deluxe and premium LED turn signals offers 530 lumens of bright white running light, which are the brightest in the industry and have a lifetime warranty. And last but not least, the LED tail lamps come in a wide range of designs to add that finishing touch, and all products are plug and play. NAMS Custom Cycle Products since 1999 have been offering American-made wiring products for all things V-Twin, and Badlands for over 30 years has been offering the most reliable and dependable lighting modules in the USA, backed by a lifetime warranty. Find out more about these great companies at namscustomcycleproducts.com and you can drop in the FL2020 offer code which gives you free shipping on all orders over 100 bucks. Check them out guys. John Jessup's Team Dream Rides out of Stockton, California is a one-stop shop for you to have your motorcycle customized, maintained, repaired, and upgraded with in-house dyno tuning and parts and accessories. Also, Check out TeamDreamRides.com online store to see the full array of products for your bike and you as a rider. And if you're short on cash, you can take advantage of the 100 days same as cash financing on all products on TeamDreamRides.com. All you need is a job and a bank account. And while you're at it, give John and the team a follow at DreamRidesJohn on Instagram. Paint Huffer Metal Flake has been with our podcast since day one. And I've been using their flakes and pearls in my paint work for over four years now. And you can get started down this custom paint path as well with many must-have items for the custom paint process. Head on over to PaintHuffer.com and you can save yourself some coin by using FastLife21 offer code. And last but not least, you can get some inspiration by checking out all the amazing paint work created with Paint Huffer products at Paint Huffer Metal Flake on Instagram. As I said before, we got a great show with, with uh, Brian here today. Um, 
good friend of mine, as I said many times before, and is a big supporter of this podcast since day one. Um, we've been using Paint Huffer Metal Flake in our shop and their pearls and other products from them from damn near the last three, four years now. And uh, can't say anything. I'm, I'm literally, as soon as I get off this podcast, I'm going to flake out an FXR. So it's uh, it's definitely something we use in the shop a lot. You guys should be checking him out and following him. Um, yeah, this episode's fun, man. He came to the studio. We finally got to have Brian here in Texas. So that was a fun one. And um, looking forward to having more guests come out, man. We, we've been working on the studio to get it more dialed in, uh, work on the lighting to get it to a little bit to be a little bit more pleasing to the eye whenever you're watching it on YouTube. Um, and we're just about to really go hard with the content on the video stuff. So hopefully you guys are on our YouTube channel and following that shit. It's going to be uh, dropping some more videos soon. Um, good times ahead. But you know what? Let's get into this podcast with Brian and uh, we'll see you at the end of it. All right. Hey guys, you ready to let the dogs out? Fast Life Pod. Uh, it's up and down. Right. You're not getting rid of your bike anytime soon. No, nah, nah, I'm not going to get rid of it. It's yeah. uh, to get back to that level where it is now and to be able to have all the parts. It's, you know, so I'd rather just ride it to the ground yeah. <laughs> and then rebuild it again later. That's what I'm going to do. Just so. I'm gonna enjoy it. I think you knew I bought a Rogue Light, right? Yeah, you said you did. Yeah. Yeah. Will your location come up as the Fast Life Garage? It should. Or I think it just says Fast Life Garage. I don't know. It's a weird one. We're live, by the way. Nice. Let me get this up in here. Let people know that we are on. Let me make sure the sound is good. This is what I look like 24-7, head down and just posting. It's how you, like, just sit on your phone the whole time? Totally, dude. I fucking live on this thing. I wish it wasn't that way, but... All right, guys. We're getting into this. <laughs> yes, sir. This is round three. Yeah. Nice. Good to see you, brother. Definitely. Dude. Finally having you in Texas is nice. Dude, it's nice to be here. It's great to be here. I've been on a mini tour this past week and a half, which has been crazy. I'm going out there. I'm just posting this up. Okay, we're done. Cool. Oh, happy Sunday. Well, cheers. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. Here. Texas is nice, man. This Gotta get set up like this. What's that? Gotta get close. Get there close, you. get close. Yeah. How are we doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, the closer. Well, I usually just take it with you. Yep. You know what I mean? Mic it out. That way it's, uh, you keep the audio down so it doesn't pick up the AC running. Yep. You know? Like that? Yeah, you're good. good. Cool. <laughs> good stuff. Nice, man. Yeah, you have a beautiful spot here. Appreciate it. It's coming along. It's taking its time, but it sucks that, uh, you know, in here I want to put way more art and photography from the trips and the st shit we've done. I just, I got to find a place to get shit printed. You know what I mean? Like yeah, poster type things or something that's like, not like a banner, like what you guys make, but like a, have a picture printed out in a large format. Just to, yeah, wide format printing. Yeah, just so I can, um, you know, have some of the photography and the uh, bike trips and, and kind of fill this room up with shit that like... Uh, helps inspire a conversation, if you will, you know? Just bum it out. You know, that's actually tied into what I was gonna to talk to you a little bit about. We're actually redoing our whole showroom and shop. About, oh, what was it, probably about a month ago now, we got flooded out. Yeah, I remember that. We had a big water line that broke through and it was um, the machine shop that's next to us and then, um, you know, my building there and then the, the one that we're taking over, the suite, 
got completely just underwater. I mean, we had probably about a foot and a half of water. And it was a mess, man. So right now we had to rip up carpet and we're going to retile and just go through the whole thing. But that's what I was kind of thinking of as well. We put up some really nice slat wall and we're going to do, you know, all of our speed shapes and, and then do yeah. all of our pictures from all of our events and stuff like that too. So it makes sense to, you know, you got to, got to show your history and stuff, but how long did it take for you guys to complete this? Um, I think that we started it, uh, we soft started it right about uh, Thanksgiving last year. Okay. Like, it was kind of like a, I think I'm going to do this, and I started kind of, because this used to be just the top of the paint booth in here, mm -hmm. and I was thinking like, okay, what I'll do is I'll get up here and start sweeping it off, getting the shit off, and start building up, uh, you know, figuring out what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. and then it just barrel rolled into a full-on build this, build the loft over there, and then... Yeah, because you guys were like a quick trip. You went up like that. It, I mean, it took it a whole like, month. Oh, it, it took all of December to do, but yeah. fortunately where we're at here in, in this town, like we're in the county, so mm -hmm. we don't really have to get permits or anything to do anything as long as we're not. And how do you say it? Waxahachie? Yeah. Yeah. It's nice out here, man. It's it's crazy. Now, your whole, you're from here, right? I know I'm, a little I'm bit from about closer it. to Dallas. Okay. It's a little bit further south than I'm used to, but the rest of my family is not too far from here and so it's always been um yeah, i don't know it just kind of clicks mm -hmm. so i don't i don't particularly like it down here i like being in a place with more ter terrain and and like amenities like shopping and, and like restaurants and shit and we don't really have a lot of that down here how far are you away right now from like shopping mall or like gro grocery stores and stuff? uh well we have like that shit we got the targets and the walmarts and we got a nice grocery store here in texas it's called heb it's like the shit i was just gonna say that hebs are huge yeah and then the Bucky's or whatever. I stopped into one of those. Yeah, those. Is that like a gas station, like on steroids or something? Pretty much. I walked in and was I, like, it's like a Walmart, but it's. A I'm gas not a station. huge fan of it, to be honest with you. Like, I think it's. Uh, it seems um, oversaturated. It does. It to me, it. Um, I guess I'm just like old now, like old school. Like I just I like the idea of uh, of like that gas station you stop in every day on your way to work and you the clerk knows you and there's like you know exactly where your spot is and when you walk into bucky's mm -hmm. it's literally like walking a football field to the damn drink thing yep it's a good place to take a shit right perfect place I, but i i can attest to that last night <laughs> yeah they had the they had the actual private rooms and everything yeah. i'm like what the fuck is this but yeah it was nice <laughs> so i was blown away it, i'm like it's damn. cool for the experience i guess but i you know for me like I think it's funny, like especially here in Waxahachie, right? I, I I didn't grow up here, but I've been around here for most of my life, and I remember certain shopping centers coming up, uh, and it being all the rage, like oh, there's a, they're putting in a, you know, big lots over here. It's going to be a badass place. It's all the everybody's moving over here now. Right. And then ten years later, they build another one across the street, and oh, then okay. everybody from that complex goes into the new shit across the street. Yep. Now this one's vacant. It turns into like bazaars and. And, uh, you know, kind of like hand-me-down type stores, which right. I'm not hating on that aspect, but it just it just skips around. It never, like, fully grows and develops, and you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. So, I don't know. She gets annoying. Bucky's. Yeah, it was a trip, <laughs> dude. I, but I feel you, though, because I think it's cool. Even in my little area there, I'm about nine minutes away to the shop, but I agree, man. There's, like, a quick trip that's right there. I don't even get in the door before it appears. It's like, oh, hey, what's up, Brian? You know, it's like yeah, I do. I go to Quick Trip every day. Yeah. So uh, off a of butcher. That's yeah, right there. Was, yeah. Yeah. So like, I, I literally passed that. You know, you, you stopped by the house last night. I'm literally on the service road, three miles, and then I'm here. The house is nice, man. Dude, it's small, dude. It's yeah, a, but those are the old farm towns. Like that's just yeah. like it seems like farm is farming big out here. Or Not really. I mean, agriculture. It's, we have fields and shit, but I wouldn't say it's like farming. Okay, it's, not, yeah. it's more like meth fields is what it's like. <laughs> Dude. It's just people Check have land and they fucking, uh, they turn it into hay basically out here. You that's know what I mean? I wouldn't say it's like full on ranching or agriculture. Right. You know, like if you go up into uh, Oklahoma or Kansas and Nebraska and type shit. So. Yeah. That's where I just came from was Oklahoma. I was in Tulsa for the about a week up there. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, it was beautiful, man. It's nice. But my shop manager, I for my tattoo shop, she had called me and she was like, I'm from Tulsa. And she's like, you're going to come home with some bad habits if you stay there too long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? She's like, it's the meth capital of the world. I was like, yeah, but yeah. you know what? Everywhere is, huh? I'm from San Diego, and that was a big meth capital. And fucking, you know, feet everywhere, dude. Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't, you know, it's who you choose to hang out with and, and be with. But um, 
So yeah, last year, you know, you guys were killing the end of the year with the live shows. Yeah. That was going strong. It's amazing, dude. And then COVID happened. Boom. COVID <laughs> came in. So and I'll kind of reroute this here in a second, kind of explain even while I'm here. Um, one of my buddies, he's the um, he's Danny Boy O'Connor from House of Pain, mm -hmm. the rap group. So I was meeting with Gibson Guitar up in Tulsa this week, just going over some custom shop stuff that we're gonna be doing together. And Danny hit me up and he was like, hey man, you know, he has um, the movie The Outsiders. Mm -hmm. He bought the house for The Outsiders house. Mm -hmm. He was on tour back in the probably late 90s, 98 or whatever, and saw that house. And I think he bought it for like $10,000 or $15,000, just yeah. super cheap. But all these celebrities came in and like helped him build out that house and turn it back into a museum and do all this cool stuff. So mm -hmm. I was like, all right, man, you know what? I'm gonna hop in my car. I went through you know, New Mexico, through Amarillo, and then out to Tulsa, and then I hit you up, and mm -hmm. I was like, dude, I gotta come down, man, and, and try <laughs> to do something. Because I had to get the fuck out. Because not being around people yeah. and just being stagnant with the COVID, it's cool, but I love like interaction. I love being around human beings. Yeah. And, like, you know, Danny Dixon and I talked, and we're both kind of like, you know, I mean, I don't ever want to hurt anybody, but this whole mask thing was kind of, you know, I'm just like, whatever. But the COVID thing, yeah, it definitely put a dent in our live shows. Danny and I are actually going to do one. I hit him up one time, and he hit me up. He was like, hey, man, I want to do a bunch of artwork for my place. Can your guys on Team Pain Huffer, you know, can we do some stuff? And I hit him back. I was actually breaking in the motor on my bike. I went up to Flag, mm -hmm. which is a pretty, like, two and a half hours north. Mm -hmm. And I came back, and I was thinking, I'm like, well, dude, let's just do it at your new place. you got a grand opening yeah. that you'll eventually do, and let's do a big art show there. So that's what we're working on right now is we're going to try to facilitate something. And you got to figure out any dates yet for that? No, because he wants to do, like, a flannel mm -hmm. and then do, like, the metallic fabric and put the Huffer logo into it and stuff. So mm -hmm. I was like cool man rock out so um i had hit him and i think he was in miami at the time he had bounced out on vacation or whatever and he was like dude that's some creative thinking at three in the morning fuck yeah i'm all for it man let's do it <laughs> so we're kind of just in the talking stages but um you know it was nice when we were doing the live thing because i had um daniel from italy came out we had smith concepts from australia and then all of our other you know top tier artists that were just there you know doing the live mm -hmm. Uh, for the live show but the night that we did it when was this this was back in it's like february february yeah daniel called me that morning at five in the morning he goes brian i have to leave i have to go to uh, las vegas to fly back because my travel agent says if i don't leave now i'm locked in the country yeah holy shit so i'm like all right dog like what's up you need to ride you want me to give you know i'll get you i'll pay for a ticket for you whatever you need and he was like no i'm good man he's like i have to go now so he and his girlfriend or fiance, they left and split. And then um, I think Homer was with me down yeah. from, uh, he was Houston. there. Were you out there at that No, time? remember I, I, so I passed through uh, with my buddy Aaron. We you were did. out there. Yes. I flew out there to do some talks with uh, some clothing people. Yep. And then, because um, Daniel ended up coming through here, the, how do you say the new, new Oh, Nuradu or something like that. Nurado, something like that. Yeah, I fuck it up. We did the podcast together in the studio, and then um, you know, and then he went. He was headed back because he went down there to paint with Homer. That's right. And then that's he was headed right. back to Phoenix, and then doing the show, and then that's when the COVID kind of like shut it down right in March. So, Where is Scott compared to all this? Chemical. Yeah, is uh, he? he's right close to downtown Dallas. Okay, so he's not. He's in Fort Worth. No, downtown Dallas. Downtown Dallas. Yeah. Okay, and that's where like Deep Ellum and all that is. Yeah, he's not too far from there. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. That's crazy. Do you all run into each other at all? Uh, he doesn't really come out much. I, I know he does a lot of things, but he's, like he's kind Mr. of a hermit. hermit. Yeah, he's a total hermit. Yeah. yeah, he definitely is, and you definitely won't do the podcast. I've asked him a million times. Dickhead. But <laughs> maybe we can try to. He, he said he doesn't ass. like the way he sounds on it. He's, oh, fuck it. Whatever, it's like, dude. dude come I don't on. like the way I look, but I'm all hung over as fuck today. And we were out late last night. And, but you got to do it, though, man. It's a yeah. fun thing. I'll always... I live for this shit, dude. I live for social media. I'm on the... We were just talking a few minutes ago. I live on my phone. And it's a weird society now that we have to kind of do that. Dude, um, I'm, I'm struggling with it, man. I'm actually at a point now where... 
this morning when I woke up and I was uh, hanging out in the shop or at the house, I was like looking at videos mm-hmm. on like how to detox from it. Not, I don't think I have a right. problem, but right. what it is is that I feel less motivated on certain things I need to be putting more energy into. Yeah. And then I quickly all the time just pull this up and start I doing know. this. Well, I heard shit. you yesterday too. I think you're going to slow down on drinking too. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. Montuckies. I don't know if I'm not. Yeah, right. You had to get them to sponsor. Me. I uh, no. I I think um. I need to. I mean, like I said, my health. I'm I'm gaining weight like a motherfucker. It's not. COVID. You know Dude, it. We all. I I love to blame it on that, but it's at the same time like I. You know it's. Dude, it's not. It's eating <laughs> shit. Like for me on the. I've been on the road here for the past week and a half, and it's like. Dude, I'm not. There's no salads. There's no health food at all. There's nothing. But I'll go back, and I'll be a dribble on a wheel and just go run mile or whatever. And I lose weight really quick, you know. So I'll start doing cocaine or something. We'll figure it out. <laughs> doing some good stuff. But no, I don't. You know what? It's funny too because I really don't drink when I'm back home. Um, mm-hmm. I'll smoke cigarettes if we go out every once in a while. But other than that, I eat like a rabbit and I stay healthy. But when I'm on the road or whatever, I'll. It's been a junk fest for sure this past week and a half. So I've been looking at it from the aspect of the dopamine hits, right? right? Like, right. I like drinking. When I see a beer, I'm like, fuck, I want that. Oh, dude. And then you hit it, and you're like, great, awesome. But then, you know, every day afterwards, I don't – I've been weeding back my drinking a lot compared mm-hmm. to what I used to do. Like, it used to be a full-blown party everywhere we went. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm trying to not let the party in kind of thing. But How old are you now? 38. All right, so you're my – yeah. It's just the older we get, dude. I well, mean, it, the older we get, yes, but the, like uh, now that not not the, I don't like to say the word now that there's a financial I'm financially getting a little bit more stable in life. Like right. I want to do more shit because sure. I now I can. Yep. But now my health is going to end up being the factor that keeps me from doing that. So I want to make sure that uh, yep. You know I don't. You know I'm all, like I said I'm the heaviest I've ever been in my life right now. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I. You don't look. I mean, I see you like. I don't think I'm so, good at yeah. getting the right angles. Yeah, right. You got that. Yeah. Got your <laughs> so, no. But, yeah, it's the thing. It's like, so I was looking at my phone, and I got a lot of shit that I like to do, man. From, like, the, I got, like, 15 skateboards, 15 panels that I've been wanting to paint forever. And I just, my dopamine has been transferred into doing this and social things with people. Right. As opposed to creating art or you know, this year I've been focusing a lot on the camera and I enjoy that, but Dude. it's it's a lot easier, not easier to be a photographer, but it's a lot easier to point and shoot versus stare at a piece of metal and shape it into, not shape it, but create something on top of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, your Fast Life visuals, man, when I saw you, that you've been doing that for about eight months now? Yeah, I, I started the, the page in April. Okay. And it was only like the idea was just a place to put pictures. And I'm it, looking at your camera. Are you shooting Nikon's? I know Canon. Canon. Okay, yeah. that's my wife too. She's got like I don't know whatever. She keeps on getting like this new glass or whatever, and she's uh-huh. huge into photography. She um, won some contest years and years ago, and then it just you know got the bug. But it seems that it's definitely an amazing hobby. But I saw what made you get into that. I've always taken pictures, right? Forever, you know. But yeah, Instagram, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was that, and, and I, I said, I think I said it before on here, but I've always been good friends with most of the photographers that shot my bikes for magazines, mm-hmm. and I've always been fascinated. I'd be standing behind them while they're shooting, and and then like traveling on a bike, or put like this: when you're painting a bike and you're and you're, you know, you got it set up like downstairs. You saw my lift, like it's sitting on the lift. All the tins are on it. And you're just kind of rolling around in a chair. You start to see it, like, you do. like a, you know, like you see it in the frame. Like, damn, that's a fucking badass shot. Absolutely. Uh, that angle of the bike, and it's always helped me with the flow of the graphics too, because I'm seeing it from this angle. Yep. That I'm like, okay, people are going to see this bike from the same. I've been walking up on it. So you've got that eye. And you and I were talking months ago too. I'm huge into film. And yeah. That's something that I definitely want to do going forward is I, I really want to start to make a documentary about this. And we talked about that with Tim Lowry when we did mm-hmm. his podcast and Matt and those guys. But I think that's down the pike. I was talking a few years ago with Mr. Cartoon and Estevan Oriel. Mm-hmm. And Estevan and I were talking. And he was like, you know what's crazy? When somebody breaks out back in the day, like a, you know, a grip of, you know, pictures, it doesn't matter what they are. People are just drawn to like, oh, let me check that out. Let me see that. Mm-hmm. And when I first saw that Instagram had an app, I mean, it was only for photos, right? It was what it was supposed to be. Just people taking pictures and putting photos. It wasn't kind of like how we turned it into a business and a yeah. living, right? I mean, it was 
a trip. It's the best business tool though because oh, it's totally. a visual. So if you Absolutely. sell something visual, then yep. everybody. So tattoo artists, photographers, yep. and chicks with big asses went to the top of the fucking totem poles. Absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah, so. and it's amazing. So I mean, I love photography as well, and I could see why you would get into that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Are you going to start doing stuff for? I don't know. Is magazine still going to be the big thing? You think? Or I, I've I shot a buddy's bike for a buddy that possibly will be in a magazine, but what it, it wasn't like. It's more like an opportunity that just came my way, and maybe it came my way because of my place in the custom paint world, you know. And I pick, you know what I mean. So it's kind of unfair right. because, you know, I'm known for paint, so I pick up a camera, and the other people in the world are probably going to give me a lot more opportunities, and maybe someone more deserving, to be honest with you. But I don't really want to do it for money right now. Like, yeah. I'd like to, I feel you. I'd like to put a couple of years into it before it's ever something that's a. Uh, a financial gain and then we'll do you know. a documentary together the, well the the video stuff man i really want to get into that bad myself man you i have should. everything yeah dude. i have got the eye there's a big ass gimbal down there there's a drone up there there's uh you know pro mics for like video capture like i have everything but the problem is uh i haven't found a way to do any kind of vlogging that that feels real does that make sense yeah it it, i feel like it, it i feel like every time i try to do it it feels fake okay and so i don't I just don't want to do it. You know right, what I mean? Right. Because what happens is, check this out. So let's just say I'm going to go do a vlog of my day. And my day is usually pretty interesting if you're into paint or bikes or whatever. So right. set the camera up, put it in the shop, go outside, open up the door. Guess what? That's the first fake thing I've done all day is set up a camera to fake my ass walking through a door. That right. don't feel real. Right. Pick up the camera. It's going to be a great day. You, you want to be Mr. Positive. Yep. It's easier to be positive all the time on social media or on Instagram because you're just putting up a picture of something right. and you can maybe put a nice sentence there or you can like throw one you'd like Sunday vibes or Monday vibes and leave sure. it like that. Right. But it's a dope picture. Nobody knows how you really feel in your head. Right. But on a when you're doing vlogs, man, like to be real, you could have some depressing ass moments throughout the course of a couple of weeks of like your shit tanking a little bit. And this happened yeah. on my podcast. Yeah, but you, you should know. film it. I don't. I don't. Fuck it. It feel. It just doesn't I'm feel right you. yet. No, no, no. Do it. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's the name. Yeah, you can't be counterfeit. You can't do that. I think even with us, like every night when we ship out packages, like we ship out, you know, twice a day. But I want to show people that hey, look. We're not sitting around fucking around twiddling our thumbs. Yeah. If you order from us, it's out the fucking door. But, you know, it's the whole thing like customer service is everything. Yeah, I could sit there and fucking hashtag it and preach it. But if I'm showing it and we're yeah. showing it, I'm saying, hey, look, I'm the guy taking this tonight because our male lady has COVID and she's down. She's not able to pick up shit. But I feel like I'm like, you yeah. know, just like on a wheel. I'm like, okay, people are like, oh, great. There's Brian again. You know, taking the cage and dropping off the packages. People want to see more than that, content of that. But they don't understand that I've been up since 5 a.m., yeah. busting my ass all day. I don't have time to stop, set up a camera, and do that. I can't, you know, I'm not, I can nerd out where a GoPro if you really want to see my whole day. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but then but, the editing and yeah, putting the videos out. Totally. It's not a so deal. I, I completely get that. I think um, if we did documentaries or something that would be heartfelt like that would be rad. I would see you. I, I could see you do. I know that me like and you that. talked about doing that documentary a while back, and it would be definitely fun. But I don't think that I, I don't think that I'm qualified to do it because the person that's going to do it, narrate it, produce it, direct it, shoot it, mm -hmm. it needs to be someone that literally dives into not just my part of it and yep. not just like Danny D's part of it mm -hmm. uh, or. L Bugs or one of the other many badass painters all over the country. Sure. You really have to engulf yourself in all these different scenes to yep. really portray it right. And Absolutely. I don't have I don't think I could do that financially. Or even the time. Right. You don't have you a know? schedule. Either. And I would have you know I, I, but like this like I as a painter right. I love the lowrider culture. But oh, yeah. I'm not in love with it the same way I'm in love with the motorcycle culture. Right, right, right. So right, my enthusiasm to talk about the motorcycle custom paint world is going to be much more heartfelt and engaging if yeah. I was the one doing it versus yeah. like if Tim Lowry was the one doing it for lowrider right. art. And doing the voiceovers or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, not that I was going to be the narrator or anything, but no, it was just the concept of like... Well, what if... What would the 
Well, let's say this. I mean, I know we're just kind of thinking off the cuff here, mm-hmm. but maybe even we could like tie you in in some way. You know what I mean? Somewhere from not the whole thing, yeah, but yeah. I would love to get your eye into it. And we'll think about it. You know what I mean? That's something. It's something to oh, definitely. Yeah. I, I'm passionate to do about it. what I do. Okay. Though. You're, are you kidding me? So yeah, uh, yeah I'm passionate about this, but I'm also like a. The same reason why you know I haven't you know we talked about it last year going into the uh, doing the um, the classes you know what I mean and the other you know the only reason it's held me back from that and even doing it here at my shop yep is because I'm a little I feel a little too honest and I and I, I know that the goal is to sell people on this dream right <laughs> and this right. dream is is good yep but you're you know if you're if you're factoring in like wanting to have you know my skills or my situation which right. trust me you might be in a better situation than me right and the back end but if I, i've been in this thing for almost 18 years now right you know what i mean paint yep. and grind and getting to this point and and the only reason like i get a little weird about it is because i got into it 18 or i've been doing this for 18 years as a custom painter for sure but i had a job at 18 years ago doing custom paint every day right so it wasn't a hobby. It wasn't a hobby. Exactly. It was my job to yeah. go to work and pick yeah. up an airbrush, and it was my job to go to work and buff a gas tank you know, and do these things. We talk about, like, Eddie Van Halen, who just passed away. Yeah. There's a kid out there right now that wants to be the next guitar player, but he doesn't have Eddie's hands. He's never going to be sound, act like Eddie, because he's not Eddie. Same thing with you. Mm-hmm. You're going to inspire a lot of people. Your artwork does. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you got Disneyland here. I totally see where you're going with on the class end of it. I get hit up every two seconds. Hey man, how do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do this? And at the end of the day, I look at it and I'm like, all right, am I being a fool here? Because it's three in the morning. I could be going to sleep right now, but instead I'm going to answer these questions. Does it help my business? Maybe they'll buy a jar of flake or, or some leaf or whatever on there. But if you inspire and you start to, you know, I start to see some of these guys who I helped maybe three or four years ago start to come up mm-hmm. and then they're, you know, the love and the respect and they're passionate for it. They're going to learn from somewhere. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt about it. If they're that, if they're that hardcore passionate about it, the people that are just like, Hey man, can you go ahead and write out every little step, how to do this whole entire fucking low rider truck? And I'm like, you know, okay, yeah. delete. But if it's somebody who's really passionate and I see that, I'm like, Oh man, you know, it's, it's amazing. Where do you want to go next? Because you're, Dude, you're killing it. I mean, you well, got all this. Do you want to stay on the on the podcast thing? Obviously, it, it's a tough one. Film? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I that's the that's the struggle every day is to figure out where to right. focus energy. You know, and I think this is good because people don't see this grind about being a custom painter. They think it's all you know, rock star. They see you at yeah. they see you at uh you know Sturgis and partying and having all the magazine covers and the <laughs> limelight, which is great. Yeah, right. And oh, you're lucky. You own Paint Huffer. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, luck, yeah. luck has nothing to fucking do with it. I mean, uh, it's. I, I had somebody yesterday. I met with this guy who grew up with Stevie Ray Vaughan. He was a childhood friend, and he was like, "Wow, man, how did you get with this company, or how did you get these guys?" And I'm like, "They came to me, or I talked to them, and we just had a good relationship, and we're yeah. done with theirs. Nothing to do with luck. It's just my hard work, you know. Yeah, and it got pays it. off. Yeah. yeah, got it from that point, from there. So I think that's a huge amount of respect. Do you see yourself? going into something a whole different no i I think that i think that no matter what i do because i I love paint but somewhere along the line of being a painter Mm -hmm. i fell in love with motorcycles and now the motorcycle is the thing that gives me the most joy absolutely right and um i want to find it i I just you know like i i think i've even talked to uh steve about this when i had uh steve gibson on the podcast i was like you're you seem like your passion is art it is and, and that, I'll, 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 that yeah. you know, you're, you know, the high that I get riding through New York City for the first time mm-hmm. is like, fuck, I did it on a bike. This is badass. I feel like accomplished and I feel successful. I feel like I'm doing everything I want to do. Absolutely. You get that when you're doing a badass painting. Right. Right. I look at my paint work as the means to do this other thing. Sure. So. Yeah. It's not that I don't enjoy it because I love there's no better feeling than like rocking a helmet or rocking a paint job on a helmet, seeing getting it to my friend or to a customer overseas or whatever the case may be. Right. It's an amazing feeling and I like that and I don't want to get rid of that. No. You know what I mean? But no. But the motorcycles where it's do you and I are the same meaning? That's I told you it, that it I was in a coma because most, of man. motorcycles. I yeah. love motorcycles. I fucking eat and breathe. I can't wait to finish out our bike. We're doing the brand new twenty twenty road glide that I'm working on right now. We're gonna 
paint it here pretty soon. We're, yeah. we're pretty much just got it a little bit more comfortable where we're at. But, dude, I mean, even being on the road here, and I'm like, fuck, man, why didn't I just bring my bike? You know what I mean? I wish I could have, like, not hauled all this stuff. But um, it's beautiful. Like, right now, all I want to do is go back home and just come back out. I mean, to be that's yeah. all I want to do. So I want to get back on the road. And I might do it. I may, I may just sleep on, <laughs> sleep on your floor next week. But uh, you never know, man. I want to get back on the road quick. But I love... I went up to Payson and then Flag recently, right be- the day before I left to go to Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. And it was just, I don't know, something about just, like you said, being on a bike and everything, I'm just passionate. And the way it sounds now, my bike sounds amazing, it feels amazing. I'm like, all right, it's just, I don't know. It's, but a, I think, it's a weird one, man, because yeah. I, I, I don't know. I love painting. I just, I haven't felt, um, I wouldn't say that I haven't felt a lot of the same love from the paint world as I get in the motorcycle world. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like uh, like if you think about your audience, right? Yep. And if you do this trick, this audience likes you more, and you're pretty good at that trick, so you keep doing it and you build this audience bigger. Mm-hmm. The paint world is so small, and everybody that's a part of it is competing for it, mm-hmm. right? Yep. There's yep. not like fans of custom paint. There's customers. There's customers, and then there's, right the right. people that execute the, the paint jobs, right? right? Yeah. So, it you know, like, I don't mind helping people out, like you were saying earlier about, like, the questions and things like that, but there's a part of me that, I've said this a million times on here, um, I'll answer questions if I see you've made the effort. Right. And if you haven't, if you ask me certain questions, I know you haven't made the effort. Absolutely. And, and to that, I'm like, I'm going to be a dick. The yep. game's to be sold, not told. Totally. Yep. But if I see you've made, I know where you're at in your struggle to get the leaf down right. or get the airbrush figured out, mm-hmm. and I can help you, usually with one sentence can solve that problem for you, mm-hmm. as opposed to how do I do this? Right. I'm like, all right, man. Like those guys that are being lazy or yeah. women that are being lazy, we get hit up with everybody. But the laziness is what gets me. And yeah. I'll immediately just say, hey, delete. Um, we sold out our class, so we. So Danny D, mm-hmm. actually Armando from Iwata, those guys hit me up and they were like, look, let's do a custom paint class. We want to make this happen. Um, out of respect, I called you because you and I were going to do one yeah. together. And I was like, hey, man, you know, are you cool with this? We're going to do one at, at uh, some facility in Phoenix. And that facility actually checked out recently just because um, of COVID. Yeah. But um, we sold out in 13 days. So Iwata contacted me back and they were like, hey, this is the fastest anybody's ever sold out of a custom class ever. We had other sponsors in other areas, other, you know, tons of other sponsors, but we want you to be the main one. And I was like, wow, I'm honored. You know, thank you very much for that. Let's do it. So I get hit up every five seconds on on Paint Hub yeah. people are like, hey man, can I do a class or can you teach me? Or hey man, can you give me a call and walk me through this? And sometimes I will, you know, but there's times where you know, I'm out at the bar eating dinner with the wife or whatever, and I'm like, you know, I'll take a quick phone call or whatever. But it's just, I don't know, man. I fucking love the paint world. Mm-hmm. I love things about it. But I can see your point of it, your frustration of it. It's like, okay, if I'm not getting the accolades here on this market and in the motorcycle world, you are crushing it. Well, so know? this is a good perspective for you and like what your brand is for us painters Mm -hmm. you're the only one out there that is a resharing the work that we do right b you're more involved in the actual industry because all the people and i don't want to sound i don't want to sound like i'm talking shit about them but all the people that work at house of color and sherman williams and hell ppg just fired half their people so it's like what are they going to be they're all corporate people right they don't they don't paint on the side they don't really have a passion for paint not not to say anything bad about that because that's 90 percent of the world right they sell stuff that they don't actually right but what i'm trying to get at is up until social media particularly instagram became big the biggest names in the custom paint world for us to go not only find inspiration Mm -hmm. but also buy products was coast airbrush Mm -hmm. right yeah he has no social media presence no but he's still known mm-hmm. amongst the custom paint world so he's living off something he built in the 90s and the early 2000s absolutely but has not been able to transition that relevance now into the 20 teens in my opinion i just got a message the other day that he wants to talk with me and i guess there's some things that he wants to start doing together um i've never met dave and i've, I've always obviously known about him but i think 
when I got into it and when I started painting and I saw the homework going into it, you know, I never thought that I would be painting for people that I, I grew up surfing and skating. That was mm -hmm. my big thing, you know, punk rock, surf, skating, rap. So in the air, in late eighties, early nineties, in my, when I was growing up to have, to be able to paint choppers and stuff for these guys that I had like, you know, posters on my bedroom wall. I'm like, oh shit, you know, you're Steve Caballero, you're Lance Mountain or whatever, Tony Hawk. And you do paint jobs for them. I'm like, oh, I'm fucking into this. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. They lit, they lit it up. So then I started painting, painting, painting. People were like, damn, dude, you paint so much. Like you huff and paint. And then I got the nickname, Paint Huffer. So people think that I was just a dollars guy. Like, oh, you were an engineer and then you got into like, you know, doing, um, like a business and doing whatever. It's like, oh no, I, I painted, I custom painted I'm yeah. from this. I have the passion, but immediately coming from also being a tattoo artist and owning tattoo shops, I was very much on respect, yeah. okay? So tattoo, we talked about this before too, how the tattoo industry just became saturated. Everybody yeah. was a YouTube tattoo artist in a heartbeat. I mean, it's mm -hmm. over the past years, we've seen that happen there. They lost their passion. When I got into it, I literally contacted Catfish Carl, who worked on the pike with Sailor Jerry, Kate Hellenbrand. I contacted all these old school artists and was like, look, am I doing this the right way? Am I, yeah. Should I get an apprenticeship this way? Should I not piss off? When I opened my shop, I did it in a small town. I think Waxahachie is a small town, right? Mm -hmm. Like this would be compared to like Dallas or Austin, yeah. where I was last night. This is like what I did. I started a small shop and did it respectfully that way. Same thing with Paint Huffer. You know what? I'm a small dog. I'm not going to talk bad about any other company. I still mm -hmm. don't. There's companies that'll, if you're doing something right, they're going to bite on you. They're going to hate on you. We see that every five minutes. You know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to keep smiling. You know what I mean? Fuck y'all. Yeah, but what we're I'm trying to say, is, I, I'm not, I, not that you're implying this, but just to be clear, I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say that, that um, um, Coast Airbrush is a bad company because no, I still no, no, buy. No. I, I oh, bought an no, airbrush no, no. from a couple no, weeks I ago. No, I feel you were saying about the love. Yeah, and I think what happened was the reason we got so successful so quickly is we captured. People yeah. like you, amazing talent, is because we were showing you love. Where House of Color was dropping the ball, Coast Airbrush dropped the ball. I'll say that yeah. you know right here. It's absolutely what happened. I think they do like a Tuesday Facebook thing or whatever. But I think you know what? If you love something and you love, and I see your passion from it, you got me to hop in a car and travel to all around America. You know what I yeah. mean? And that's what, and that's that's inspiration. That's what I love. And that's what all I want to do, like I was talking to my wife last night, I just want to come home, get on my bike, and go back out. Yeah. I just want to I just want to go. But that's the thing. I want to give back that love to these painters and start showcasing them and doing that. Since our first conversation, I was like, Who are you? Where are you at? You're out of Dallas? Oh my God, your work is amazing. Post, 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 post. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. And it wasn't you know, that's where we talk about being counterfeit. I wasn't posting your stuff because you didn't, you weren't using my product at the time, or maybe yeah. you had just started. You would to. always ask me, "Hey, is yeah. this the, is Respectful. this my flake, or is this it's like before I was using yeah. House of Color flakes?" So. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think out of respect and out of relationships, that's where you know this guy asked me last night. He's like, "Hey, man, you know, I grew up with Steve Ray Vaughan. People mm -hmm. ask me all the time, oh, man, how is this? Whatever.' But it was just." you know, a childhood thing. I didn't grow up being a custom painter. You know I mean? I yeah. decided to sit down one night, I grabbed an airbrush, I taught myself, I went to a jobber the next day, it was actually the day after Christmas, started airbrushing, started learning it, and it had the passion. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anybody to ask, there wasn't a company. If I called House of Color and said, hey, um, how do I mix this pearlescent, or how do I do this? They would have been like, there's nothing that they could have asked, yeah. right? So I think I was very fortunate you know, I grew up surfing, but to hit that wave right at the right time, no wonder we have copycat companies. And now yeah. House of Colors just contacted me back and they're going, hey, we want to sponsor this. We want to work with you. Cool. That's awesome. Come on. You know, yeah, but, yeah. I, but I feel like y'all could have been doing that fucking 10 years ago. You they know could be I mean? doing it now. Right. I mean, literally that bike down there was all that paint was donated by a company. Mm hmm. They have yet to share one photo. And I've taken quality photos of this bike. You're a photographer. New York, Milwaukee, Ridden It, Sturgis, Yellowstone, all this shit. I'm like, look, I, my deal when I get sponsors mm -hmm. is I create content. Yep. And I give you stuff to post. Right. That's the whole, that's the gig. So, Unless you're paying me like to be a, an act, actual sponsor on shape. here. Right. The, uh, the whole you give me this, I create stuff. That's the brand ambassador aspect. 
you know, but like if you don't use it, then why are you doing it? That's why I came on when you and I talked. I was still tattooing at the time, but I was remember I was setting up for a tattoo, and you told me you were like, "Hey, man, I'm going to start this podcast." And I was like, "I'm in. I'll sponsor yeah. you from the beginning. Let's do this." And I think that respect is what House of Color should have been doing that a very long time ago. PPG, um, you know, it, it is what it is. But I'm hey, I'm fortunate if I gotta if I gotta be the guy in there, and yeah, I don't know how long we have in this life. I mean. Yeah. All my heroes are passing away. Everybody's going away. I'm I'm 47. I'm like, shit, man. But when I die, I want them to be like, hey, he was a gentleman, and he did what he said he was going to yeah. do, and he was respectful. That's all I can ask. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If I can pay my bills in the meantime of it, high five. It's awesome, man. I fucking love this. Love the fact that, like I said, man, I'm going to go home and get my bike and come back out or whatever. I made, I don't know, man. There's a lot of America that I still want to see and do yeah, this. Yeah. But I've got my warehouse working hard today. We've got all of, your, all of our ducks in a row, and everything's cool, man. We're known for fast shipping, so we're getting everything right back out. But it's passion. You know, people don't, like, see, they're like, oh, you're lucky you have that company. And, like, dude, luck has really, I mean, it's just hard work and, and diving into it and being that way. But I think you and I are very much that way. As I think you were always that way. Like you said, your dad was at a tattoo shop, or he was? No, no. How did that work? My dad was a custom, he wasn't a custom painter. He was a, uh, or it, he is a, uh, like he restores cars. So he's really good at, okay. you know, doing, taking an old car and fixing rust panels and, and making, you know, shaping metal to the point where he can replace certain panels. Nice. Right. Yeah. Um, he's very good at that. Uh, he can actually paint. He can do all that shit as well, but he's definitely, um, I think in, in my mind, I think he's the best at like, he's, his best skill is the, uh, you know, fixing rust spots on cars, right. making panels to fix things for things like that. But my uncle had a tattoo shop for a while. That's what um, it was. Okay. But I mean, I was young as fuck. Dude. I was skateboarding at the time. He had a tattoo. I didn't give a shit about right. tattoos. Right. Um, but you were into basketball too, though. Uh, yeah, I grew up you playing were, sports. really passionate. Yeah. You and I were big Sean Kemp fans, and we talked yeah. about that. Yeah, man, that basketball. Are you still playing at all? Are you getting out Man, there? well, I would be, but they took the fucking basketball goals down mm -hmm. everywhere. All the city parks around what? here took. It's like what they did in L.A. when they dumped all the. That's sand why I'm not seeing any kids at the skate parks. I guess. What the fuck? So like when we, uh, you know, last year I played basketball quite a bit. I started playing more in uh -huh. Septemberish. Right. And this year I would have too, um, but like I said, it was uh, like I, the the court that I used to go play at, which you know it just they took the basketball goes down so there's only poles up in the air doing nothing because they don't want people to social distance or whatever the fuck so give me a fucking break but you it's, can all because you can walk into fucking bucky's yeah where it's like a fucking <laughs> fucking wash pit people, over yeah. there yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of weird shit going on but i mean this year is like one of those years where it's <laughs> like i don't want to write it off but because i think everybody that's writing this year off is doing themselves I've a, had a service. great fucking year it's a good opportunity to hustle harder yeah and is. come out on the other end yeah. in a better spot totally so yeah. I've told a lot of people, that a lot of friends of mine, I was like, you guys that are, I wouldn't say fortunate, but if you look at it, if, you're, if this is your perspective, if you're fortunate enough to have downtime now right. and maybe a fucking COVID check or, or a damn PPE loan or whatever the hell. Totally. Embrace it. Try to, what, what is something you've been wanting to do? Fuck yeah. You've been wanting to learn how to do this? Why aren't you doing it? Exactly. You know? Exactly. I think you always say that in your podcast or whatever. You talk about it with... Um, even with us, you're like, hey, man, now's your time to get in with this hobby. If you want to learn, go get some supplies and learn. You know, get yeah. into it and do it. You got time to do it. I think COVID is obviously horrible. And I hate seeing old yeah. people get hurt. And I don't like seeing anyone suffer or whatever. But I've always had a huge positive, you know, attitude in life. And that's the way that I am. You know, I don't really have ever bad days. The other thing I don't ever do is I never get bored. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm never one of those guys. I've always been into like, you know, just everything, music, uh, sports as well. I love, you know, absolutely love sports. I think it's, there's always something just to dive into. The The people that I think they get stressed out or worried is they worry about every dollar coming in. They're worried about, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this? Is I think if you just take a breather sometimes and say, hey, look, you got your family, you got your health, mm -hmm. you can drink a beer, we can do this. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah, dude, life is rad. Life is so fucking rad, dude. I can't. I don't know, man. I'm having a fucking blast, dude. I can't yeah. believe I'm here. You know, I'm like, fuck, dude, this is cool as shit. So I've always been this way, and it's always kind of just worked for me. But I get it, man. There's hardships. I've got buddies who 
I had a buddy the other day, his um, 18-year-old son walked out to go grab his cell phone and had a heart attack. Damn. Died. Okay? So how do you even register that? How do you, you know what I mean? So I talked to him and I said, hey, this sucks on every mm -hmm. fucking level. I'm not one of those guys that's going to be like, oh, man, you know, Mike. I would probably whatever. just send him like the emoji yeah. where the, it's like. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly, right? <laughs> I don't say, dude. No, I just went over there and was like, hey, you want to smoke a bowl? Like, here, like, let's just sit and talk. Or, you know, give somebody a hug. And I think that's where people need to do is check out for a second. Stop worrying about every fucking dollar. Don't worry about that. Money will come. We can all go get a job, you know, hopefully. And, you know, you can. I'll go deliver pizzas if something doesn't work out. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, yeah. I'm a hustler. There's no doubt about it. I work all the time. I make it happen some way or the other. But I struggle, and everybody goes through the down parts of it, too. You get struggled in your, in your anything you do that's over clocking it. You know, that's why I've always had so much respect for you, because you'll check out, and you're going. Like, you're going to Sturgis. You're going here. You're going there. You just get on your bike, and you go. And I think that inspires a lot of people. I mean, I did it in a car. Because I, you know, I had to take a bunch of shit, but I mean, now I'm going to go back and grab my bike, and I want to go a lot of places before it gets cold. This weather out here is this humid? Yeah, kind of. Right now, it's not. It's more hot than anything. It didn't seem that hot. It's like a Phoenix lot harder. Is hot, right? Yeah, it's a lot. Well, it's probably humid for you because it's dry as fucking Phoenix. But mm -hmm. to me, this isn't shit compared to what the humidity we usually have. Yeah, so it's usually like friends. as soon as you walk outside, you're back sweating. Yeah, you my know? buddy Steve in, in Austin was telling me that last night. He's like, "Oh, Bri, you should have been here two fucking months ago, man." It was dude. Completely. In September, we we had some like when I got back from New York, man. I had. The weather here was awesome. I had right. the AC turned off in the shop, yeah, and it felt great. It was like highs in the 70s, lows in the upper 50s. I was like, fucking perfect. Damn. And then we got another hot spell, so it's been like the last like couple weeks, it's been up in the uh, the 90s again, yep. which isn't bad compared to what we're usually in the hundreds here. Yeah, because I really wasn't, because so. my wife had called me, and she goes, hey, do you realize it's like 100 degrees every day? And I'm like, no, I don't. Yeah. And for me to get on a bike, do you don't notice it that much out here? Uh, you ride every day, right? No, I don't really ride every day. I mean, like I said, riding. Um, when I got back from New York, man, all I wanted to do was fucking be in a car. I was in a bike for a week and a half straight. You know what I mean? I just yeah, so wanted to sit I'm, in so a I'm, car. I'm vice versa. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, don't give me the fuck out of this car. But, yeah, same thing with bikes, man. It's like no matter what, it all things all turn into some type of job for me, and that's that's why I said I don't want to make any money doing photography. I got you. Because if you paid me, yep. you know, I got uh, I got an ad coming out in D Dice Magazine. I shot that helmet right there for Simpson. Yep. So stoked for that opportunity, right? Absolutely. But yeah. I didn't I didn't want to take money, which I know other photographers are like, oh, this dude's fucking ruining our right. business, and I'm sorry. Right. But, you know, my uh, it's something that I really enjoy doing right now, and if I start taking money, Dude. then the switch goes off in my head, yep. and next thing you know, I got five photographers running around town, and I got all these accounts, and I'm I'm don't, a business hustler, man. Yeah, so you are. You don't know. don't monetize your your something. Your yeah, I, I get it. When I was in um, when I was in high school, there was a AP art class mm -hmm. and this guy kept on telling me he's like okay we got a deadline we got a deadline got a deadline i'm like dude you're taking the fun out of fucking drawing if i yeah. get to, if i sit down at night and i want to draw something i don't want to be forced to draw mm -hmm. okay same thing when i was a tattoo artist i quickly got out of making stencils because i don't want to sit there at night at night i want to go home i want to hop on my bike i want to go out and ride i want to go to the bar mm -hmm. i want to have a beer i don't want to be sit there drawing up a whole bunch of shit i was like no you know what i learned quickly sharpies give me your arm I'll draw up your tattoo. Yeah. People are like, oh, whoa, you can draw? Yeah. You know, yeah, I love it. That's the passion of it. But yeah. you're right. When you start doing it, like monetizing it, and you start having people, and then you're on their schedule, and you're, hey, man, are you coming over? Are you done yet? Or yeah. this? And then it's, you're like, all right, fuck this shit. So the done. way I look at everything that I got going on right now is like, right now, because of the podcast and because of paint, and then maybe in a couple of years because of photography, I'll have a couple of sources of income. Yeah. Not major income, but like in, in my... I have a perspective of like a very comfortable way to live in a creative environment mm -hmm. would be to not necessarily to only paint a couple things a year, right? Yep. But really put everything you got into that. Right. Do something like this mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And then do photography. And then you have three sources of income basically that are um, that are feeding you in a way that where not one is dominant over the other, but they all go to making the month work the month yeah and then my job is not to wake up at 7 a.m every day and grind in a paint shop right until 12 p.m or 12 a.m every day right um 
and and hitting deadlines and this and stressing the fuck out and right. you know I would rather you know not or, have that. Yeah. <laughs> so I was with my cousin last night who just retired from the military and he was like, "Bry, you got to start doing this more, man. I mean, you're almost fifty years old. You got to start getting out and doing all this." And I'm like, "Yeah, you know what? But I'm so like just hands on and so passionate about my business that I don't really." take a second to even think about that. Like even on this trip, like I'm still posting and I'm talking to customers and doing all that. It doesn't feel like work right now, but if it does to that, oh, I'm checking the fuck out, man. Yeah. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I would be, and I don't know if this happened to Dave Monning from Coast Airbrush or whatever, or these guys like House of Color, whoever, you know, Valspar, who whatever, these corporate dudes, they just, you know, they're investors and their platforms into it, but they're so fucking disconnected. Not Dave Monning, but other the, corporate the companies. companies yeah. yeah, they're so disconnected. Because when you, they should, I mean, and I'll say this straight up, they should be coming to you and saying, what do you want? What do you need? Well, I would say with, with in, in regards to that, I, I don't think that, I think that Dave is, is still, I think Coast Airbrush is still like the source of a lot of oh yeah things for us paint-wise. Right. Um, Absolutely. But... The world we live in anymore, like we shouldn't have to go to California to get attention anymore. No, there's social media, so I don't need to no. drive to California to go stand out in front of his shop and go, "Hey, look, I'm a badass artist." And and you did that back in the day, airbrushing and like you said, yeah, you did I used that. to do that stuff. Right. But I mean, now we we don't yeah, we you, shouldn't have to. No. And you know, like um, if you look at like on if you go to his his website to you know like their store or whatever, yep. there's all these sponsored artists on the side of the. You and I talked about this. And half of them don't even paint anymore. They're not even in the industry anymore. They're not in the industry anymore. Right. Be exactly. And because tattooing industry was more lucrative for any artist than the custom paint one. Sure. sure. It's not Dave Monning's fault that that's the the, the paint industry is kind of have its up and downs. But no, he should take them off. Yeah, he should take yeah, them yeah, off right. and, and the replace them with new right. fresh people that are on there. Right. But. The thing is that like our industry is driven by the automotive paint industry mm -hmm. and that seems to continue to inflate mm -hmm. because of the collision industry mm -hmm. and the insurance industry yep. which then makes it hard for us to where we have to charge $15,000 to paint a bagger now. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Like it, it's that's why I was like I, there's no way I, I mean I just can't not that there's people out there. I know there's people that do $15,000 bagger paint jobs. I know them. I met them. Yeah. Awesome. Great jobs. I just I don't think that I can offer something that high. You know what I mean? I totally do. Personally. Yeah. Um, and with the way things, the way that I feel like things are going in the paint industry with, with costs of things getting so high to have quality materials, you know, people want, they want a warranty. Like you go buy a car for $30,000 and you got to buy a $5,000 warranty on top of it. Right. That's only going to last you for 100,000 miles, which these days, the way we drive yep. is about two and a half years in a car. Totally. Right? Absolutely. Meanwhile, in a paint job, you know, they want this unlimited warranty for everything. Also regarding to the fact of how you take care of your paint job. Yep. So if you use really, really high quality materials, then it kind of idiot proofs you who don't know, who doesn't know how to take uh, take care of your paint job. Mm -hmm. it, it idiot proofs me. So I can, uh, or it kind of lose my words here, but it's, it's making it to where I'm not having to be responsible for, uh, it's not even that way. I'm trying to figure out how to no, say No, I follow you. Yeah. And um jumbling my shit right now. Right. <laughs> no, I see what you're saying, man. I think um it falls in line with what Paint Huffer, with what we're doing. And I think we're gonna start doing I don't know in what direction as far as products and stuff. I'm not gonna come out with some cheap stuff in my back back of my shop just mixing up paint that's gonna delam or have issues or color is, uh, color issues. I want something that's solid. Yeah. When I release something, like we just released those ice pearls, mm -hmm. man, it's dynamite. You know what I mean? It's gonna be UV resistant, solvent proof, you're not gonna have any issues with it. It's one thing to have a bunch of cool names and to have a cool, like our team, and I'll touch on this for a second too because we talked about like how Coast has a, a lot of guys or women that are not on their team anymore. But with us, I want to start doing different tiers of our sponsored artists because it's so cool now when I see all this, people are like, team paint effort, team paint effort, team paint effort. They don't know that, hey, look, I have 38 sponsored artists right now. These are what I have as far as, you know, the most elite paint team yeah. in the world. There's other companies out there that are copying and doing the same exact model. Oh, I've got a team. We've got a team. We've got a team. That's cool. Yeah. Keep it coming. Um, 
I don't care about anybody else. Nike doesn't care about Reebok. I sure the fuck don't care about any other company. Yeah. House of Color, PPG, everybody else. I'm glad that you guys want to start working with me now. If I've got to be the Energizer buddy, and then now you're going to start jumping on, yeah. come on over. I'm glad to have you. Let's all have a barbecue. We'll kick back. Let's make some awesome products together. Let's do something rad. Yeah. That's my mentality. I'm just going to keep it up here and just like, let's fucking rock out. Let's have some fun. But where I won't do is have artists on there that are just going to go on there and want to start other companies or do other have other you know hidden agendas like oh man i'm going to try to get on this and i'm going to try to do something as well too yeah i'm going to be like dude get out of here you know what i mean kick yeah you don't want to yeah you don't want to be someone's stepping stool like exactly to step over you yeah like i want to same thing like i have a hard time getting painters on this podcast you know Mm -hmm. and um all the I, i don't want this to sound the wrong wrong way but all the people that I think most people are going to want to hear from in the paint industry mm-hmm. are the people I don't get a lot of response from. Hmm. But then all Do you the think guys, it's just I don't, I don't know what it is. Jealousies, I don't know. Envy, I, I don't think it's that. All the I mean, bad stuff that I don't think it's any of that. I just it's a um, you know because I, I don't want to say that because like guys like Lucky Strike, Poland, all the homies in in Phoenix, they always come through. But you know, you you just don't get a lot of I don't know. I don't want to say any names, but it just... No, 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 don't. Yeah, you know, no, 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 no. you no. reach out and you, you, right. your shit gets left on red. I'm like, yep. motherfucker, I'm trying to... You got 2,000 followers. I know who you are. Right. I've been following you since, you know, early 2000s, but yeah. you suck at social media. Right. So... Exactly. I want to share your trying story. To help you out. Yeah. You know, it's not so much I want to... I do want to help them out. Right. But they're somebody that was inspiring to me. And Absolutely. I want to help you be known yep on in this little universe of social media Fuck right yeah. yeah and um it's just stressful man because but you like, feel like you're you feel like you're trying to sit there and, and kick start a dead a dead motor like a yeah. dead like a dirt bike you're just sitting there trying to fucking i'm kickstarting kickstarting kickstart i'm like dude i'm trying to be your spark man come on you know allow like help me out here yeah get on this i agree there's some people that i've definitely put a lot of time and effort into and you'll see that but i'm like dude sometimes some it's just people's People get complacent. They get to yeah. a level where they start making a monetary level and they're like, all right, well, I've made it. And I'm like, I just can't see that. Or they're on a level like we talked about if in the in the industry of airbrushing or whatever, that they'll make it and they're like, okay, that's it, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna go on and just, I, I'm the best. And I think that's where a lot of these major companies came on. They're like, oh, we're the best. Nobody's gonna mess with us. And then you have someone like me who's being like a little, chihuahua sitting there yeah. yapping away and barking i'm like hey man fuck this shit i think i can do it better i think we know i know we can do it better i think we're gonna come out with some cool products and just blow people's mind and have some fun with it but i will not i will not i'm not gonna sit there and reach out and shake hands with somebody who's just you know where i have to pull them up and get them off their ass even if they're a badass you know painter or whatever i'm like all right dog you need to step up your game and realize that you have you have to hustle. Sun's up, bills are due yeah. every single fucking day. There's nothing that we can, we may not see the sun, we may not see the bills, but they're here every fucking day. I'm well aware of that. I've said that in the other podcast. Yeah. It's something that I definitely will always, you know, it's just who I am, man. Sun's up, bills are due. But I get that. I've had to go deliver pizzas in the rain. I had to go fucking work in a warehouse sweating my ass off. And I think now, you know, sometimes people just don't have to do that, whether they have an awesome family, which is great, but they don't have that hustle or that grind or that, you know, whatever yeah. about them. So, but I think that's where you and I do have a lot of respect for people that own businesses or have, you know, different things like that, that definitely came up with nothing and, and built that well, way. There's like a, there's people that I followed or that, you know, since I started this podcast or even before that, mm-hmm. other painters that, that, that were, you know, I don't know what the correct term would be to, to describe it, but that, you know, like they're just a little bit, maybe they don't do this for a living a hundred percent. Right. Sure. Um, and then just seeing them and, and knowing who they are and, and watching them progress and grow over the time, like seeing them every day, like posting a new Tumblr, they pinstriped or right. a panel they striped. And all of a sudden like, damn, this line's got consistent. Like I'm not the best pinstriper, but I can, I can, I can critique it. Yep. You know, like I know what's, good and what's kind of you know where you're at absolutely because i know where i'm at you know what i mean yeah oh yeah but um i think it's you know those guys are every day it it all boils down to my when it comes to getting better at this whether it's 
the podcast, the photography, being a biker, if you will, mm -hmm. um, painting, running these businesses, it always comes down to how much time you put into it, and things just start to click. Yeah, you know what I mean. They do. And um, and I guess it's like wrapping back what I was talking about when I first got on here. Like I'm in a, I'm very fortunate to have a backlog of work, right? So yeah. I'm not stressed. Like I, I know bills are paid for Christmas, unless a fucking Android or a fucking crazy shit happens in the world and we just all get shut down. Like right. I'm pretty good. You're good to right? go. Yep. At that point, we'll need guns more than we need money. That's right. So exactly. You know, for me, it's like. I want to get back to being more creative in a lot of different as aspects. And right now I feel like all my creativity has been funneled into social media. Right. How do I show them th what I do in the most creative way? And it, it, it feels like it just, I don't know. It, it goes back to feeling like that fake thing. Like yeah. right. everything I do is real, but yep. it's also a real big pain in the ass trying to do that rather than just, I would love to like detox from Instagram for like two weeks Fuck, dude. and then just come both, back. Man. And like got this done, this done, this done. And I wasn't, right. I wasn't, you know, because what happens is like I finish a paint job, right? Or the, I just posted one the other day, right? And then you put it up there, and I'm not trying to, right? I'm not trying to, but oh, this one's doing well. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, yep. what do you mean it's doing well? I've already got paid for it. That's the best it could ever be. The customer loved it, right? But in my head, I'm looking at it like, does everybody else like it? Right. How's it? Is it getting shared? Yep. Is it this? Is it that? And so like that part of the paint job mm -hmm. is a new thing over the last couple of years or right. last 10 years yeah. that I feel like can put you on a very big high Yep, or very right big low. Well, that's what Yellow Wolf just said that a couple hours ago. He was talking about something trending. He's like, yeah, whatever the fuck that is, trending. He goes, you know, we just had a million views or whatever it was on his new video. And then he was like, dude, but it also got this amount on trending. He's like, what the fuck? Whatever trending is. But it's... I get it, and I see what you're saying from there, and how we're talking about an industry of love and and roller coasters. Every single industry is going to have that. Everything's going to have every even right now at our time that we're dealing with some heavy shit. I mean, this world's definitely crazy. I think if you just keep that positive mental attitude and just fucking roll with it. I was talking to Danny G the other night. We were at the shop, and. Um, Danny was like, dude, he goes, he was talking about something. He goes, like, they were saying in the future that everybody was looking at their hands. And I'm like, yeah, dude, my eyes are fucking getting bad. I live on this thing so much. Yeah. Like, people ask me all the time, they're like, oh, you wear glasses all the time. Like, your sunglasses are, you know, I'm not trying to be a fucking rock star. My eyes are bad. I'm having to, like, you know, sit, look at shit from afar. Yeah. And I live on it. I have not, in the past, I would say probably six solid years, has there ever been one day where I've just set a, set aside my phone and yeah. locked off? But being on this road trip right now uh -huh. and being just traveling all these states and everything, I think I want to do that. I yeah. think I want to go a few days and just take a break and just step off. I think Paint Huffer's at that point where people are going to know that, hey, we're still shipping out every day. We're still moving it from yeah. there. Yeah. It's just my own fears and my, oh wait, what if I don't answer this person's question? Or what if I don't get to this guy in, in a matter of time? Or what if I don't get her order out by five o'clock or whatever? Yeah. No, that's all that stuff's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, people are gonna answer that. But I think where you and I are both in the same sense of it, I can't just hand over my social media and you can't to somebody else too. Yeah. We can't go get somebody to manage it. It's something I was talking to Kyle, uh, Kyle Smith from Smith Concepts mm -hmm. in Australia. He's like, Bri, I'm so drained from all the social media because not only do I have to do my normal daily operations, but now I got to be on, you know, display. I have to, I have to build a show, yeah. you know, curtains open. Yeah. It better be a good movie today. And then when you close it, did you have a good show? Was it, was it good? I'm tired. That grind, it gets tough, you know, yeah. you're like posting everything. So now I think I'm going to step back for a few days a week and just say, Hey, look, cause I have to, you know what I mean? Just for my own, just. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Take dude, I, I don't post that much, right? No. So I don't, no. I only post. You post your content. I post. Well, so I just had this conversation with my buddy Jason Hallman that runs uh, the Speed Metal Bill Garage. Oh, cool. Okay. I, he has too many fucking names. I always talk right. to him. But, <laughs> you know, and I told him, I was like, you know, my social media, my, my page, like my timeline is only for me and what I do in relative content to me. Right. You know, and so that's that. Stories, I'll put anything on there. Sure. Relative to the brand, right? Yeah. 
And, um, and I think that's good too because you show a lot of your personal life and stuff on there. I do it on the stories. You do a lot. On the stories, not yeah. not not the thing. Not so much on the uh, the thing, but I did post the thing of my son going to the camp thing with me. Love it, love but it. But that's yeah. you know like I'm not trying to open up a can of uh, woe oh, is me type shit. Yeah, I'm know a great dad. Da, 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 da. Yeah, People I'm not trying to do that. Yeah. But um, but it's fun to see that though. It is, but you don't want to fucking flood people's life with your life. It's right. kind of. Right. It's, there's there's companies yeah. that do that where they're posting every five minutes like, oh, I just walked into this store. Now I'm going over here and getting something to eat. Now I'm going to go. So yeah, it's like, okay, I don't need to see all where that. Where I'm at right now mentally with it is not is not like not posting, right? I'm, I can do that. Sure. My thing is like every time I have a second of like boredom, I immediately grab this and it's like three apps. I hit bam, uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. oh, a couple comments, bam. Mm -hmm. uh, what's on Facebook? Bam. And then you're like, well, what's on my group chat with all my buddies right now? Who are they talking? It's like I constantly yeah. go to these three different places. Right. And I'm like, man, like, I just, I, I, I want to feel separated from it For to sure. where when I get a moment of clarity or a moment of uh, like nothing to do, yep. that I go do something else that needs to be done. Go shoot hoops. You know, that or go, shoot hoops, go pick up a skateboard and start spin yeah, strapping skate, it or dude. just Every something day, else. My childhood. I mean, whatever. It was great. It was fun. But when shit didn't go right, I jump in the water. You know what I mean? And I literally, I could look at the whole entire world on the coast, the coastline, and I'm just like, all right, man, I'm going to keep all that shit out of there. But the older I get, the more I have to go back to that again, where I need to go pick up a guitar. Yeah. Pick up a guitar, you can't look at the phone while you're playing guitar. You can't do it. So there's things that you have to have, like positive, you know, things like that. I remember when I was younger, my parents were total hippies, so I could smoke in my room. My sister could smoke in her room. You know, we were 15, 16, whatever. But it was some of the greatest times where I'd take like a boom box and just start playing like, you know, Jimi Hendrix and like learning songs and stuff like that. So lately, I've been trying to get back to that again too, where, you know, now that I made a little bit of money, I can start affording, to, you know, to do different trips and take things like that. I think it's healthy to do that because, mm -hmm. man, I get oversaturated on that damn phone. It's every two seconds. But it almost becomes too addicting. My wife is like, do you think you're addicted to your phone? And you know, she's a rocket scientist, right? So I'm like, yeah, I'll listen to what she says because she's, you know, definitely has some intelligence about it. And I'm like, I wonder, I mean, am I addicted to my company? Yeah, oh, fuck yeah. And my tattoo shop as well. Like I'm addicted to business and, and mm -hmm. you know, having a great company is amazing. But am I addicted to see like, oh wait, what did he post? Oh wait, 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 what is she talking about? I think I am, and I, and I look at it, it's like, you can watch TV, but this is a constant soap opera, right? Yeah. So I'm like, so the, I, I, now that I've been on the road here this past week and a half, I'm like, all right, man, what I did, which was weird, is I actually put my phone in the back of the seat, they have those little pockets in there. Yeah. That was the hardest fucking thing, dude. I did 600 miles, or I did what? Seven hours yesterday, yeah. when I finally pulled over at Bucky's, and I'm like, hey dog, I'm here. Like, but it was great. Yeah, I just took a break. You know what I mean. And sometimes that's. I think I'm gonna start doing that uh, more of that. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't know. It's a. Uh, it's a tough one, man, because everything is derived, is, for my business at least, through social media. Likewise. You know. Yeah. Um, absolutely. But we don't want to be a slave to it. Yeah, I. I don't. That's. You know I mean, 100. Yeah, percent Yeah, you don't want to be a slave to any of that yeah. shit. I, just, I do like it when you when you when you do post because if you, for me, I'm always posting like, okay, here's we're pulling a cart and we're shipping. It's gonna get boring. They're gonna be like, oh yeah, tonight we know nine o'clock. Brian's shipping out orders. Like yeah, it's whatever. So I think what I'm gonna start doing, and um, just so you guys out there that are listening to this or whatever know, is I think I'm actually gonna start flipping the camera around and start talking to you guys. I mean, yeah, you guys know I'm pushing orders out or. Cat's pushing orders out, or Jamie's pushing orders out, whatever. Whoever's pushing the thing there, I want to start doing some more feedback and getting people yeah. involved. I think this year, more than anything, we've had more people at home. Our business is up 182 percent. Fucking huge. Yeah. COVID. Think. Okay. Thank God, everybody's at home. They want to do hobbies. They want to have something to do that. But the other thing that I've been doing a lot of, which is fun, is just giving back. I'm like, fuck it, let's give some, you know, like, I don't see any other companies doing that. Mm -hmm. Not House of Color, not PPG, any of these other companies giving them pounds of flake away. I'm like, hey, fuck yeah, let's do it. Let's yeah. have some fun. And that builds up a great content as well to where they can get in there or thus, hey, you know what, we got a new color, let's have you yeah. guys name it. 
get the public more involved. If they're sitting at home, they want to watch what Payne Huffer is up to, yeah. do that. Now, am I going to show you at the bar with Jace and we're getting fucked up? Maybe. If you guys really want to see that, come on in. We'll do a live thing. I'm all for it. Like, yeah. hell yeah, let's party. Um, I don't know. There's a part of the... Uh, um like the the painter like if you put a bunch of painters like this is something i witnessed whenever i went down to the um, airbrush art circus thing that that uh my buddy ron puts on he i think he he's actually doing one in phoenix phoenix now. yeah bugs is coming to the day he's going to be a part of it he was like hey so i went to the one down in san antonio and these guys are all there to teach right i was going down there to see if i wanted to get into that teaching thing which sure. i do want to yep but i don't want to do it with Createx. right Right, and okay. the reason that everybody pushes Createx is because they do them in hotels. Oh, okay. So okay. they don't have the ventilation to spray. Now, oh. Createx is good yeah. for the aspect of like if you're an airbrush guy and you don't want to breathe in those chemicals. Right. It, like Ryan Townsend, uh, fucking Corey St. Clair, uh, but Steve still, Gibson. There's there's still chemicals in it though. There is stuff yeah. still yeah. in yeah, it. If it's just low VOC, VOC yeah. or no VOC, there's still chemicals. Those dudes all learned how to adapt and work with it, and those why those guys have always been superstars with the teaching. Sure. I don't use that in my day-to-day -day life. I'm not going to teach people to use that. Right. 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 So I'm not. It's. it's kind of, I'm not going to teach how you use something that's not practical in the custom paint exactly. industry. Yep. You can't match so, Harley colors with Createx. Yeah, so. Um, no. So, but the, what what happened is when we went down there, all of us that were, for lack of a better term, like like me, Corey, Ryan, Darren, Winslow, all these guys, we like just. As soon as we all got a chance, we clicked up together and was like, like finally someone that's on, like that I can share stories with and, and like you know like bounce things back and forth. They understand and the they struggles. They comprehend exactly. Yeah. yeah, they know it. So yeah. it's like the first day of that show or that event is literally like all the painters like getting shit off their chest with all their like-minded uh, equivalent friends. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And so I've always wondered, it's like, what if I lived in Phoenix? I would. I would have probably set up something more, for lack of a better term, intimate, where we're all like, hey, uh, we're doing like a painter hangout. It's nothing live, it's nothing crazy. We're just- That's what we're doing. We're just sitting out around t talking shit, shooting the shit, especially like yeah. in Phoenix, there's so many bike shops, so many people work for the same companies back and forth. And I didn't really realize that until you had, you had actually came out and then um, you know I hooked up with Big Chris and now we're doing my bike and, and G and uh, Jeff Holt. I became really good friends with Jeff. And uh, Phoenix is fucking rad, dude. Like, I'm more and more proud that I'm there. But, I mean, I love Texas, though, too. Don't get me wrong. Like, when I come out here, I'm like, fuck, dude. Maybe this is nice. You know what I mean? Maybe I'll move out here or retire out here. And that's a whole other conversation. I, I need to ask you about the whole Galveston and the whole ocean thing out there. We've been watching this HGTV and you see all these houses out there and they're on the ocean and stuff. And yeah. I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, sign me up. I'll go out there. That'd be great. do hurricanes. Yeah, just, fuck it. You know what I mean? But I come from that. A any coastline, you're going to deal with some shit, right? Yeah. Like, if you know, where you're, wherever you're at. But going back on there, but that's why I wanted to create the live art show was to have painters come out and hang out. There was nothing, there's no contest, there's nothing, there's no structure, there's no yeah. formality. Come out, hang out, have a good time. And I think that's what, I'm gonna keep doing it, you know, for the longest time. Um, Tim Lowry contacted me recently. He's going out to do something back east for another show. And he was like, dude, he goes, I can't wait to do another live one. I said, wow, that's what we're gonna do with Dixon. We wanna do it in his new facility. Have fun with that. But man, I'm praying that 2021, we can kind of get past a lot of this and hopefully you get to some normalcy, whether they have a, a vaccine or whatever. I don't know. You know, I hope they do and hope everybody gets healthy. Yeah. But let's get us back to having fun, getting back into having people come over and do that. If you're a newbie and you want to come and just hang out and pick Jace's brain for a couple seconds and you can kind of ask your questions, that's a cool thing. It's a hangout. It's not, yeah. you know, hey, look, this is your structure. This is formatted. This is the way it is. I was talking to Tom from House of Color the other day. Taylor Schultz hit me up and he wants to do a class at Painhuffer and do a, an afternoon. And, and we're going to work on something, I'm sure, and we'll figure it all out. But I just didn't want it to be so processed. I like having a loose format. You yeah. know what I mean? Come down. We have hotels all around us. Stay in a hotel. Fuck, I don't care. Stay on my floor. Whatever you want to do, you know, hang out. And um, just have a good time. But do you think that the art circus thing, like, do you think it kind of became too, like you said, like in a hotel and was this the wrong vibe? 
No, I mean, I think that people, when they go to it, they definitely gain. There's a lot of skill. I mean, there's a lot of knowledge there. Right. And depending on who you are, mm -hmm. because a lot of people go to that to try to get their art seen. Yes. Yes. Right. They and that's up. not, you know, I that when I first went, my first time when, when Airbrush Action was still doing it, that's what I went for. I went for the wrong reasons. I really didn't walk away with anything. Okay. You know? Okay. Because... Well, that's good for people to hear. Yeah, I, you, you know, think I wanted, there. you know, it, it's kind of weird, right? Because how do you judge people's success in art? Right. Right? Right. Because right. most of the artists right. that I know are broke. Yep. They don't but, see the... But they're the best. They're, yeah, they're the best. They don't so, see the whole behind the scenes thing. And that's when you and I talked about when I first walked in the door today was about the respect, whether it's artist to artist respect or industry respect. It's hard, man, to do that. There's companies that just won't give you the time of day or they won't really, you know, or people are in it for a shady reason. You know what? And I think that's anything, too. Like, even people, when they get into the music industry or whatever, they want to form a band and become a boy band. They're just going to fucking cash out or whatever. You know what's counterfeit. Yeah. And I can see the same thing with these artists that try to come up and they're like, oh, you know what? I learned how to tattoo on YouTube and now I'm the shit and I'm going to start a tattoo shop and just try to monetize the fuck out of it and make a lot of money and whatever. And you're like, you're such a fucking tool. You know, I see that, you know, it's just like, all right, but then you lose respect. And once you've lost respect, game over, man, you're done. So I think a lot of these artists that are just think that they can jump into this without really being true and genuine. And I think that's what you're trying to say too, is going to be hard. If you're coming into the Airbrush art circus thing, or you're going to a new event just to expose your art, Dude, come yeah. on. You're going to get, you know, I don't know. Well, it's 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 kind of a uh, you're, you're trying to expose your like this. This is how I was always looking at it, because I felt the way that I could be relevant mm -hmm. would be to be respected amongst my peers. Right. Sure. But the only way to become relevant is to go to these things and pay to be a part of them. Eventually you get to be in. Them. Right. Right. And I'm like, right. I don't want to do that. Like. Yeah. So I you're gotta, paying for your I'm, yeah, yeah you're paying for your that. way in it right. and um, yeah. not saying not to go to the not saying not to go to the airbrush arts I I thing. think that the best way to go to those things is to go and try to learn yep you know and um, it is well what Bugs told me the other night he was like hey Bri he goes you know we sell out of this thing really quick and everything he goes but we're not going to give you everything but we're going to get you there for a nice platform that we didn't have as beginner artists yeah. we're going to give you a solid platform that you can learn and step on it we're going to make it definitely worth your time if you're going to put in that effort you're going to get it back yeah so did you when you first got started getting into the industry how did you get did you hit up like ryan townsend we're like hey man what the fuck this is amazing like just started paying compliments uh, no i was i was here before ryan way before okay you know, I mean, I had quite a few magazine features before Ryan did. That's right. So I didn't know. So, I'm using him as an example. And I'm just but and I, I say know, magazine yeah, features like as are. like some loose ass term to just to kind of like paint a little bit of a success right. onto what I had early on. But I remember Ryan did it the other way. Ryan, I remember picking up Airbrush Action and seeing him in the uh, when you send in you submit your work to get like a. Uh, honorable yeah. not I don't know if the word is honorable mention but like in the first part of yeah. it yeah yeah so I remember seeing his work in there and he was fucking hustling he was up there in Oklahoma mm -hmm. I remember he would come down here to Dallas every once so he was just he was super passionate about it right yep. at that point I I had been airbrushing for a while and when I first saw his airbrush work I was like oh I'm fucking he's not because I'm a, comp, a competitive guy so I was like absolutely ah he's still got a ways to go yep and then just he was like fucking like was he well he was tattooing as well too, no right? he just he started wasn't? tattooing like a couple of years ago who was the one that i was thinking was tattooing that was living in vegas he had an rv and who's fucking um oh he's amazing man he's such a good fucking uh, the name will hit me um but he's also an airbrush artist too i think you know who he I'm is probably as well sure i do yeah, but yeah you do but anyway so ryan so you started seeing him in the airbrush magazine yeah i saw him see him but he started playing the, he are, he started pushing that, that that circuit right okay the magazines going to sema like yep. even if you have to pay all your own way to be at sema sure and airbrush in any place that you can like he did that and he it got him somewhere but he still struggled to find the happiness and financial stability yep. with custom paint oh sure <laughs> me yeah I've I'm not rich by any means, but I've always been stable with paint ever right. since 2004. Right. So, right. 
to me, it's like a... And plus you created side hustles too. Yeah, Nobody I mean, like this yeah. this podcast is good. Is good. It's it's a good outlet. I mean, this yeah. is shit we do normally. Right. You know what I mean? We talk. So absolutely. doing it on a podcast is fun. I think, I think but you and I have had so many phone conversations yeah, we where we're like, fuck, dude, this should, this could have been a podcast. But, so yeah. the thing about like podcasts is like it's... It's good, and maybe one day it'll it'll it'll, you know, it'll it, it pays money now. Yeah. You know, I make money doing yeah, this, but great spot. Yeah, um, this is amazing. I can't quit my job. No, <laughs> you know no, what I no, mean. No, 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 no. But you can definitely like as we talked about. I think the older you get, you don't want to be back there. You don't want to be downstairs fucking doing body work when you're, you know, fifty five. You want to definitely. But see, our you know, our, our industry, both motorcycle and paint, mm -hmm. paint's even smaller. Like. Paint, I think, is there's a lot of people in paint, right? Obviously, there's still a million people that like custom paint. Oh yeah, right. Absolutely. But there's mil there's a couple more million people that like motorcycles. Yeah. So it's a little bit bigger of an industry. Yep. Um, but with podcast, man, like because it's still wrapped around like those, the motorcycle, the paint, the fabricator, the different fields that kind of. Like the motorcycle is the sun, and then you get all these other planets that are basically right. other fields that kind of orbit it, right? Absolutely. It's um, this podcast is never going to be a, you're never going to get a million downloads. It's never going to happen. Okay. It's not. It's just not a big enough industry. If I was tattooing, gotcha. How many people get tattoos? Oh, dude. Millions. Every millions. Fucking, millions. Millions. Every every second. So every one out of every. Yeah. Two people you would think would probably have a tattoo, or t three people in the tattoo world right now. There are people that are blowing away the industry every five minutes. There's some new tattoo artist that just came out of Australia or New Zealand or wherever, Japan. That's just, you know, the it's next the only place that you can really make financial money with you art. You can. And I think where it is now, like, so I bought my building, okay, where, I'm, where my tattoo shop is. Been yeah. there for almost 16 years. I bought the building, just said, hey, look, I'm going to, you know, I'm taking it over. This is it. But now I'm in a location where I have great artists, great attitude, great customer service. It's a full package. You come there, you get a tattoo, everybody's happy. So now you, it's really more on like how you treat people because you're, you know, you're marking their body for the rest of their life. You're doing a paint job. It's going to be the next amazing thing. People are going to realize how much passion you put into it. There's always going to be this crowd. I don't think, um, I don't know, when you say that you will never get to a million, maybe there's another avenue or something else we would do that would be, maybe if you make documentaries or something, because, dude, your photography is amazing. So I could see you definitely going with that. But like, again, you don't want to make it a job. You want to keep the fun, passion of it. Same thing with your motorcycles. Mm -hmm. You want to keep the fun, passion. I saw you paint your bike for Sturgis. It was Sturgis what inspired yeah. you to do that? Fuck, dude. If you were forced to do a paint job, maybe you were on a deadline and you were, because I see you at midnight too, and you know I've always talked, I'm like, oh, there he is drawing. You yeah. love to draw. Does your son like doing that or your daughter? Uh, my daughter did, but you know, same thing that happened to me when I turned 18. She's like college. Life. She's got, yeah, right. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no incentive to draw. Sure, sure. You know, it's like, I mean, fuck, man, how many dates have I been on in, in my lifetime where they're like, yeah, you still like to draw? Like when you're eight? Yeah. Like, right. Because people are always wanting to be connected to that creative part of their, their past or their mind or whatever. But, totally. Um, yeah. You know, I, I draw just because it, it helps me get out the ideas for paint jobs. And right. I do that to help me spend less time in here doing the paint job. Sure. But, I don't know, man. It's a. You the, come the, in here, grab a beer, do it up. That's the, your time. But it's cool seeing that, though. I'm just saying from yeah, a content I mean, standpoint I, of it, I, 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 like, to, I like seeing it. I try to That's show that, around. but I mean, because, so the, Keep doing my theory, I have a theory behind like the paint, right? Because in that theory, I've, I've been kind of loosely talking about in the podcast for like the last year, but when I saw how important like a West Coast Choppers part is to people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. A manufactured part, not some part not stamped that out. Jesse James hand hammered, right. right? Right. A stamped out part that he made and what it goes for now because they're not made anymore. Right. Because that name that's on it. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, you know, let's just say, what if in 50 years from now, the motorcycle culture is still a thing? Sure. And somehow I, ma I managed to make a mark on it with my custom paint. You have. Right? Yeah. And then, like, that helmet behind you. If I died next week, right? right? If yes. I was on my bike, yep. I think that my personal helmets mm -hmm. and some of my personal painted things, yep. 
could be the things that are raffled off to actually maybe pay for my funeral Dude, or those type of things. Fucking heartbeat. Are you kidding me? You know, yeah, so absolutely. My thing is like I want to when I when I legacy. paint something for somebody, yeah. I want it to be as meaningful for them as as I've come to find it is for me when I'm creating it. Absolutely. You know, it's very well spoken. Yeah, and so that's exactly what's going to happen. When people are like, "Hey man, would you paint this bike for a raffle?" I'm like, yeah. "Man, like no." Like if you had to for, for exposure, but you're not. I don't yeah, need, you don't to, need exposure. But and I that's what I said to you when I first walked in. I'm like, "Hey, motherfucker, you're gonna paint a helmet for me." And you're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. I'm like, "I know, but we. I want to have a helmet from you someday yeah. too." I mean, everybody does, dude. It's fucking rad, dude. So, but I, but you and our boys, and we'll get to that. But I feel you on that. I think you definitely have a legacy. I say the same thing too, man. If I was to go away tomorrow, I think what's fucking cool is that people would be like, hey, man, do you remember that company with all the fucking colors and like the funny yeah. names and shit like that? We did it. We got to put our little thumbprint in this art world. Yeah. So if I got to go be a Walmart greeter for the rest of my life right now, or if I got to go fucking whatever, sit on the corner and play guitar and put out the guitar case, dude, I did it. Yeah. I did it. Like, I stopped trying to like, Go, man, what am I gonna what am I gonna make my mark? What am I gonna do that? Fuck that. Don't think that way. Like it's just you did it. I mean, you've got a legacy already built. Like I think people would freak out if A, you're not going anywhere. You got a long life ahead of you. But yeah. if you did drop dead in five minutes or whatever, or if, or if me too, would people respect you? Would they say Jace was a gentleman? Was he a kind man? Was this guy uh, the way? Yeah, they would. They, they, they would. Kind. They would be like, hey. <laughs> you know what? And and you can't I don't know. I mean, I think that I think to have that, industry respect, you got it. I would want people to understand that, uh, yeah, I, you know, I struggle with that. You know, hell, me and my brother was getting into it yesterday about some things, but there, it, it's really hard to navigate this life. And and you, anytime you're around people that are passionate about something, like I'm very passionate about everything I do. Ditto. So I'm fucking cutthroat. Yep. In a sense, like I don't know if that's the right word to use, but you're not going. Out I'm there very dicking people over. I'm not. No, I don't fuck no. anybody over. No, no, but no, no, no. I'm not nice. Right. You know, like I you stand that, your ground. We were at bike night last week, and my wife went with me, and uh, some dude was, you know, kind of. I wouldn't say nerd now, but he was hanging out, talking like just to me. Sure. And but he, he literally started off like saying like excuses about, oh man, I really want to do what you do, man. I just you know I, I only get two days off a week. I was like. So do so something in two days. Do it. Yeah. And he's like, then he he immediately gave me an excuse. Yeah. I gave him an alternative. Right. And then he said something I checked, else. I checked the fuck out. And I and like I that. was just like, dude, quit bitching. Yeah. I checked it. Like I that. I out. that's something mean. That, like my wife's yeah. like, that was kind of mean. I was like, I'm I'm sorry. I don't have time. Yeah. You don't to sympathize with everybody in their fucking excuses right. in life. No, don't do that. You don't know what I mean? It's like, fucking. I say that, but he's then I be, fucking do it too. He's probably yeah, like, oh, well, Jason's an asshole to me. No, I was like, why? Because I wasn't like feeding into your laziness. I'm not your fucking psychologist. Like, dude, I'm not gonna sit there and try to like like I said earlier like you know sit there and try to kick start your motor fuck that man if you don't you know you can't polish a turd I, and i think you can't change that about certain people i think the more and more i thought about it just even on this trip and being in the car for so long and stuff like that i've always been motivated you're never going to stop me from being motivated yeah. i'm going to be fucking hustling 24 7 i'm going to constantly grind constantly do that so then i look back on myself and i'm like wow okay cool i've always taken care of myself done it for years i'm at a point you know, I've done a great, um, you know, um, I don't know, man. I'm just going to keep on enjoying the life. So now I'm just like, okay, you know what? Fuck yeah. Let's have a great life and keep on just in, embracing it. New colors. Let's come out with new shit. Let's just have a blast, man. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's good times, you know. But I think you and I both do that because we're very analytical that way. Where We're like, all right, well, what are we going to do next? How are we going to do this? And How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? It, it's grind. It yeah. grinds on me, dude. It grinds on me every fucking day. It's where I think it's good for you to get on your bike and just take off and go ride, vice versa, and just unwind or come in here and draw and try to check out of that. Well, when you get around certain people that, that kind of... But those, you know, but those negative people like that, they're like, oh, hey, dude, hey, dude. Yeah, dude, it's not that he was the fuck negative. Away from me. It's not that he was negative. I those just think his poison. perspective was off. Like his... Mm -hmm. Everybody that... not every, I, I don't want to generalize that big. I just want to say that a lot of people... Mm -hmm see what I'm doing on riding a bike cross country or they see this and they and they want it but then they look at all their obstacles in life right and you also got to ask yourself all right 
I have two kids. Yep. One of them is grown. The other one is old, and he does not live with me. If my son lived with me, mm -hmm. I would not be able to do what I do, 100%. No. no. It just it wouldn't be in my cards. Yeah. Right? Yeah, ditto. Um, but the circumstances of the way my life is set up and the way I've kind of set it up mm -hmm. is to be able to travel a lot. Like, I don't take any motorcycles, like paint motorcycles. I don't do it between april and october sure i know that i'm doing some right but i don't accept them like if they're here it's because it was here before it was something scheduled before for sure that's that smart. way i'm not stuck here when right. when it's fucking perfect weather across the country you can bounce i can jump and, yeah. and ride and and go do all these things that i want to do that help keep me healthy mentally right. you know but i know everybody can't do that if you have a job if you work for somebody you have vacation time and you have you know maybe a two or three day weekend every once in a while that's yeah. it yeah but and I feel you. So this gentleman that came up to you was saying that he's only got two days off or whatever. I just think that it's like when Yellow Wolf, when you went on that ride with him, and he came over and was like, "What the fuck? Who painted this?" Yeah. Somebody who hustles and somebody who knows the grind. I mean, he wasn't Yellow Wolf forever. He had to yeah. come up and get his thing there. I think people who hustle can appreciate other hustlers and other people who are very motivated and positive individuals it's contagious it's like if you see somebody just cracking up laughing you start laughing if yeah. i'm if i'm positive and i'm like fuck yeah we're gonna have a blast tonight i'm getting somebody's back up off the fucking wall let's go let's go fucking party yeah dude and i think life happens i mean i've almost you know fucking died twice i've been you know in a coma and just had bad shit so i'm like fuck this shit i'm not going to work corporate anymore i'm not going to have five bosses i'm not going to live in a foreign country i'm not going to travel the world anymore in that aspect of it just for a job i just want to have fun so it's one of those things man i think it's just i don't know man but i still i'm with you i still grind to that my wife and i are actually in the process right now of adopting a child mm -hmm. so i got to the point you know i'm 47 my wife isn't too far behind but we looked at it and i was like who the fuck am i going to pass this company to you know what I mean? I have nieces and nephews and stuff. Yeah, well, good, but, good luck yeah, with that too, yeah, because kids don't want none of our they, shit anymore. Yeah, I know. They're like <laughs> my ne my nephews. Yeah, like, I'm in a Fortnite, yeah, not right, paint. Right, Fuck exactly. Off. My nephew, exactly. He's like, you know what? If you were a video game developer or something, you can do that. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But so I want to, uh, but I think regardless, being a parent's got to be amazing. It's something that I definitely want to pass on to and and go that route. It's um. It's time, man. I mean, they, I think there's more important stuff than just the daily grind. And I think that's, you're smart about it, that. To, some to, of the, to you know, that. you said something kind of funny there because like I said, my, I never even considered, I never considered like passing on this business to, to my family or my kids, right? Right. Because I never really looked at it like the, I don't look at it as like a, the Fast Life Garage is not a business, right? It's not five employees downstairs running this and doing this. It's literally, a man cave that I walk into every day and I one day I'm picking up a wrench, one sure. day I'm turning on a camera, yep. and one day I'm picking up an airbrush. Right. There's nobody else here. Yep. So I can't there's nothing to give to anybody else. I mean I can share my skills if my son likes it or yeah. my daughter wants to get into it, but right. yeah. I don't know. You're not a production shop. Right? Yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't have a company per se to give. I, I, don't, I have a brand name. You have a brand. You're definitely you know? branded. I, I would say that if your son when he gets to a point of his life or whatever he's into and if he wants to transfer over into this that you would be like oh i got you you know what really helped like like my son is like most kids his age 10 years old mm -hmm. he's been living with youtube for a long time right he loves it yeah when i built this studio he actually started to want to be here at the shop nice because he looks at these cameras, he looks at this shit, he looks at this TV, yeah. and the fact that we can pick up a PlayStation yeah. and, and play here, and, and play he's like, on, yeah. this is cool, Dad. Oh, yeah. You know, like, Dude, that's it's, huge. it's something that he can identify with. Heck, yeah. He, he doesn't mind riding the bike, but he doesn't look at the bike like, I want to build one of those. So he wasn't into bikes. He's, for me, no, I was like, we grew up in ATCs, yeah. so the minute I could fucking ride an ATC... And my dad used to like sit me in his lap and we'd ride around the block or whatever. But the minute I had it, we had the lawnmower, you'd pull the motor. Yeah. But the minute I had that, man, that freedom, I wanted to grow up so bad that I would steal his car. I took his car when I was 14, 15, all the time, just took it. And um, in San Diego, like we had Filibertos, that was open 24 hours. Yeah. I could steal his car and go to Filibertos and hang out with all the chicks or whatever, you know what I mean? It was yeah. cool, you know, it was good shit. But I wanted to be an adult so fucking bad. I don't see a lot of kids these days 
wanting to do that type of stuff. Not go well, fucking about rob it. a car, but it's just sit around. Think and, about it. And, 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 if you're a kid and you're looking at adults now, you're seeing yeah. a fucking hot mess because we're all putting our life on social media. Right. So <laughs> you're 15 yeah. years old looking yeah. at the 23 three year old wreck. Right. You know. Yeah. Of a life that everybody else has, like, there's probably not a lot. Yeah. Uh, there's not That's a, a good lot point. of yeah, this inspiration from the youth to 20 year old culture now right. and, and rightfully so yeah. but now that everything's on, on right. Front Street all the fucking dramas TV shows yeah. and reality TV shows yeah you're right so I didn't I don't yeah it's true because we just had movies yeah we like had, we oh, saw like, we saw perfection in everything fuck yeah adult right you know freedom true. Uh, the the ability to be a badass and this that, and the other and yeah. nobody's telling you what to do and right. then you it actually was drama TV shows you actually yeah. hit it and you're like fuck man like this sucks like right. bills this that right. there's no realization and were um, you the same way too like you just wanted to get on a bike and go like you wanted to nah man I was when I was dude I don't know my my, my childhood was uh I'm kind of getting weird about it man like I don't <laughs> it's kind of a weird one. Right, because well, I'm not going to doctor fill you here. But yeah, but you know what I'm saying? I've never. I'm, I'm not a depressed person. Never have. Uh, no. You know, I, I don't. I I look at when I get down, mm -hmm. like, all right, what's causing me to be, feel down right now, and right. then I fix it. Right. right. Sure. And then I get Shoot back it. to fucking doing things. Right. Um. But I dealt with a lot of shit as a young adult that, at the time, just felt cool to say. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now I'm like, fuck, man, like that's kind of hindered me a little bit in my life okay you know okay um or maybe i'm just being a little bitch now maybe my millennialism is starting to come out i don't no, know you're not but you know when when i was a, when i was 16 um 17 actually i was playing or 16 i was playing basketball in high school that was my goal i wanted to go to college and all right, this type I of remember shit that, yeah and then had to get a job and figure out how to play basketball for you know the school didn't really work too well you know Basketball is very demanding. Yep. Um, dad ended up going to jail, which I lived with him at the time. Mm -hmm. Mom was trying to figure out her life. She ended up catching a felony. Yep. Next thing you know, mom's living at her mom's house. Dad goes to jail. Yep. I got to figure out. I'm 17. I work at Kohl's in the department. You in have to the, go see your, see your mom in a yard. Now, I have yeah. to go see my mom, but, you know, she got she just caught a felony but didn't go oh, to jail. Okay. Didn't, you know what I mean? So, okay. Um, you know, I'm, I was 10th grade going to 11th grade, and I had an apartment. Mm -hmm. And I moved I worked, out to the people yeah, I worked, my other yeah. friends, right? Yep. But I didn't, you know, like, I didn't grow up in an era where, like, kids, like, roommated together. No. I never experienced that. You know yeah, what I mean? Me like, either. I was always going solo. Yeah. So, I, you know, I had a fucking yeah. apartment, and, yeah. you know, and I had to quit playing basketball. I had to go work. And then I started focusing heavily on, like, what am I going to do for a living? You know, right. and that's when architecture came in. For sure. Got a job in an architectural firm. Yep. At so I I would go to I ended up doing well enough in that job that I was able to quit Coles and I I literally worked at the architectural firm. I went there at one p.m. every day after because I had the early release at school. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I worked till usually nine o'clock at night because I was running blueprints through blueprints? the uh, thing. Sure. And, wow, uh, that's cool. And so basically that was my job, but I had an apartment and right. then I went to school. School yep. and then you know like I managed all this shit. And so I didn't really have a, I wouldn't say I didn't have a childhood, but I didn't get to, I didn't get to go to homecoming. I didn't get to right. do that type of shit and yeah. just be a wild free kid. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Um, I, w I was just kind of the same way. Like I grew up in the punk rock scene. So yeah. like going to see bands was my main thing. But my buddy, we would steal his dad's motorcycle, push it out, start it up down the street so he didn't hear it. But back then when you could buy cigarettes out of a vending machine, like the bowling yeah. alleys, so we thought we would just be cool smoking cigarettes, going to punk shows. You could pay five bucks and see all these bands. And um, it was life, man, it was fucking amazing. But I always wanted to be, to have a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be able to have my own bike, have my own thing, and that was the big thing. The day when I first bought a Harley, I was like, oh shit, I made it. I got $25,000 a year. Fuck yeah. Mama, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you, mom. Yeah. You don't have to work anymore. You know, like, fuck, I got you, you know, or whatever. And um, I heard this comedian say that the other day that he was in the Navy and he made all this money or whatever. He was like 25 grand and he was calling his mom being like, you know, I got you. You didn't take care of you. It's funny what we think of on those levels, but I wanted to grow up so fucking bad. My mom became homeless and my dad, he just fucked off or whatever, but... I ended up taking care of him right before he passed away. And that was really cool that I got to spend like seven years with him. And, yeah. you know, I had, I had, um, 
I worked hard enough to where I could buy him a nice sports car, and we were able to go to the basketball games, the baseball games, and his favorite car was a Corvette, so I was able to do that. I, I don't own a Corvette, I'm not that type of guy, but I was able to buy a few of them over the years and have that with them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And to do that, and I was like, fuck yeah, dude, I did it. Everybody was like, dude, the fuck you doing, man? Like, <laughs> you're not that type of, you're a dog and truck type of guy. And that's what I have now, is just a truck and a dog and my wife, but, the more I get older that I'm like, man, I wish I would have had a kid. I mean, I got, I had plenty of opportunity. It's scary though, man. But it yeah. is scary. But, and now they're, we we're going through all this like interviews and process and stuff. And they're like, oh wow, you've got like the perfect application. Like pick yeah. a kid. And I'm like, well, I don't want to do, I mean, I don't want to do that. <laughs> like I want a child that's going to need us and who's going to want to, you know, needs a nice upbringing, whatever. And then I'm just I feel like, like no matter how you paint that picture, yeah. it's still like you're going to the SPCA and looking at kids in a glass case. Right. It's weird, man. They're like, well, what what age group do you want, Brian? And I'm like, I don't really fucking care. I just want a child who really needs a home. And they're like, yeah, but that's everybody. Okay, so yeah. now do you want um, a black kid? Do you want a Mexican kid? Do you want an Asian kid? Do you want this? And I'm like, dude, I don't care about any, bring it, whatever. And um, so my wife is like, are we buying a kid today? I'm like, I don't know. Did we get our background checks approved? So background checks approved. They come through. They like, you know, did the whole process. So now we're going to start doing some more interviewing with the kids. And they, it's a whole process that they bring you through it. But I'm not going to get religious on you. I don't care what religion you are in this world. Yeah. I just think that there's more to life than the daily listening to people complain listening to all this shit. I think it's better if we just get on our stuff and go out. Like this this whole trip that I've done now has been like so therapeutic. Just driving and thinking yeah. is a great fucking thing, man. I know you call me like the Dr. Phil of the paint roll because every motherfucker calls me. They're like, oh, hey, well, well, this guy didn't fucking like my picture today and this guy hates yeah. me and he's using this product and da, da 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 I'm like, yeah, I'll talk to you and I'll console you. But I just, the older I get, man, I've got I've to gotta be able to, you know, at least try to pass down some some knowledge and hopefully raise a human being that that is in need or that wants to be around and uh who knows man my kid might steal my my motorcycle or my car or whatever you yeah. know what i mean and payback's a bitch i understand it so but you but your kids are solid dude like you, you yeah can, i mean yeah. They're, they're how the pretty, fuck did that happen uh yeah. i don't know right <laughs> i grew up with my daughter yeah, right. She's such a so sweetheart. Yeah, I grew up with her, and then the last ten years, almost ten years now, she's her last eight years, she stayed with her mom. So her okay. mom definitely is is a big part of why she's so good. My son's completely been with his mom forever, and he's a good kid. Yeah, but yes, it, the world we live in is crazy, and and his mom has different ideas of how parenting should be, and than I do. Do you guys get along? We, I, I get along because in the in the world of being a male. Mm -hmm you don't really have a say in any of this kid raising shit unless you're married. Gotcha. You know? Okay. Or yep. you go into court and fight it. And my, my whole perspective yeah. is right. I want my kid to have two parents that are well off. Totally. Not one that's beating the other one down. Yeah. Don't do you know? that. Yeah. Because that doesn't do anything but fuck the kid up later on because he has one good parent and one struggling. There's sponges. And you, dude, dude uh, you know, having kids, man, like, if you're the dude on the end, you could really find yourself in a very fucked up position, almost like being in prison with the financial burden of child support in the way that works. Oh, right. Yeah. But meanwhile, right. if I just stay with the bitch, right. I can have no job and no, no, absolutely do nothing. And I don't get put on child support, but I go try to start a new life because our life didn't work out together. Right. And every time anything positive happens to me and they find out about it, it's a it's a review on the deal and you're getting up your child support and it's twenty one percent and it's like yeah. the fuck, man. Holy it's shit. like I think Imagine. most kids are not having kids right. because of that shit. Yeah. There's not like the That's the way that I was. I kinda checked out because I was and I was living overseas and stuff and I was yeah. I had a girl that was pregnant and and I was fucking thrilled. I was like, This is awesome, we're gonna have a kid and everything. And, um, you know, she decided another route. And when I came back to the States, she told me, she was like, hey, by the way, you know, I, I'm not having a kid anymore. And I was like, what the fuck? I've yeah. got a job. I have a corporate job. I'm making fine living. 
you know, I'm busting my ass over here, but I think it's just different situations on that. But I agree, you have to have a platform. There's no doubt about it. My childhood, nobody's childhood was ever fucking perfect. If you say that, then maybe it, then if you did, if you did, then high five. But I want to do it the best that I can. And I think, I don't know, man. I mean, I don't want to. There's no way I could have a kid right now. They'd be like, "Hey, who's your grandpa?" You know what I mean? At, yeah. at their high school graduation. But I'll still be that way in a sense yeah. of it. But I'm just like. You know what? Fuck all this shit. I want to have a kid. I want to be able to like enjoy just helping them. And I think you're that's, probably in the best position in life because I I'm didn't now, you know, like more of a better position. Uh, when you hit your 40s is probably when you're more financially I have a stable. Platform. Yeah. And like having a kid, you can literally give that kid more than you ever could have in your 20s, but right? When I was a tattoo artist, I lived behind the people were like, "Jesus, you are in that tattoo shop from 10 in the morning until 2 a.m. every day." I'm here. You, you can see me. I'm you drive by the window. Where's Brian? He's right so there. So the selfish thing is like you yeah, now fine. that you're actually in a uh, in a much more you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor right. in the last 20 years of your life, and now yeah. you're now you're raising a kid and, and dealing with some kid that you know like is ungrateful and doesn't think yeah. you're relative or going to be irrelevant anymore. And blah blah yeah. blah. It's like. Right. I don't sign up for this bullshit. Like I just, right. I'm supposed to be enjoying my later right. years in life and yeah. and going on trips with my wife. And right now I got this little faggot ass kid in here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Yeah, it's got to be a balance of it, man. I don't know. It's got to be amazing though, having a little version of you running around. It's, it's dude, it it's is amazing, amazing. But yeah, but it's, I, but I it's get a, you. It's the amount of stress. It's just uh, yeah, man. Like not that I would, I would, I not saying like. If you have kids, awesome. But like, right? You know, like, no matter what, I hope my. Are you trying to tell me to, to not go out and buy a kid? <laughs> so I was saying, no. It's just a weird one, man. Like, it is. It's got to be. It's, it's dude. Life is fucking weird. I mean, it's what you like. I said, which what's what we're gonna make out of every the, day. Okay, check this out, right? Yep. So, let's just say my mom's generation, right? She was born in the early '60s. So, that generation was her dad. My grandfather, you, most people in his age group got a job and worked at a factory or they worked for a company. They, was processed. they had a pension. They had right. all this shit mm -hmm. and life was much more manageable. There was probably not as much entrepreneurship in that day and age as there is now. Right. Right. True. Now we, you know, we're literally figuring out life until 40 now. Yep. When it, 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 it felt like back in the day, you uh, at 25, 26. You should have all platforms. You're already solid. you're on your way because you might have did college or you might have did a trade or you might have did right. this, that, and the other. And, yeah. you're and all, I have respect for that. I mean, yeah, that's cool to, to be very processed. But I'm digging this one. I'm digging this version a whole of a lot more. It's you know? more, it's more, to me, I feel like it's more, I feel more like I'm living my life more. Right. Like I don't really have those, uh, those uh, mundane, like every day, the same routine, same thing. Like I'm working in a factory, riveting a, a wing together, some shit, and, and I never see anything different than that. Fuck that. Every day is a different job for me, right? Or a different take on a job I'm doing. So, right. so do you think you've inspired people? Like, because you meant, dude. I don't feel like I'm working a day in my life, and and the thing is, like when I woke up even this morning, I was like, man, I hope I don't ever have to go, just punch clock or whatever i'll do it well, i'll do it in a heartbeat i'll show you how it's done i yeah. mean I'll, I'll definitely i'll bust ass and i'd be a really good happen. employee yeah i would i would i'm always on but time i also tell you you're being yeah. a dumbass if you're my boss exactly you know i'm like, the same fucking way <laughs> i had five bosses when i was in corporate and i go to their birthday parties christmas things they were always inviting me out they, they were all into golf and i was like no 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 i'm not into golf but i respect it you know whatever i'll go with you guys and drink beer smoke cigars but the, having that respect, yeah. But the same thing, though, is fuck you, no ass kissing. I don't care what, because I'll go deliver pizzas. I'll go work at Walmart. Well, most people don't get yeah. to get a job where they're actually hired on because of their expertise in something. They always still have, they might be an expertise in like marketing, but then you have your boss is the head marketer. Totally. So now yeah. you're giving him the ideas and he's taking credit and you're also taking the fall. Kind of like magazines? so fucking sick of magazines dude i'm kind of glad just to say it i'm kind of glad we're out of the magazine thing or I miss them. what's that I, i've loved magazines did you yeah Be you just like it because it's tangible and you can read yeah. it and see it from there i like that it's part like a of trophy it. yeah it is from that aspect of it but not to know. not to say that uh 
it doesn't feel great, you know, to be reposted by a paint huffer. No, but fuck yeah, dude. When you were, if know. you got your paint work in, you know, a dub magazine for SEMA, even right. if you your name's not even on it, you just I did that. Okay, well here, let me let me spin this. What I was, I guess, what I was sick of was looking at an airbrush magazine i won't say what companies but seeing fucking ads 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 get away get away get away get away and not seeing as much content yeah okay the content is fucking high five if you get your spread in the magazine you get it on the cover yeah oh dude who doesn't love that that's cool my part of the magazines was just all the counterfeit bullshit hey we're this type of magazine but we're really not we want yeah. you to spend money to come to las vegas and really well that's because money. the industry is so small and they that's had right. to put more in, they had to put more advertisements in there to cover the cost of the magazine to be distributed of course so but then you get bigger companies like even hot bike when it got to the point where mm -hmm. you had they got thick full of ads but that's because it's a bigger it's, corporation behind it yeah it's suffering and that's why i love things no, no, like, i get it i mean i know like the yeah. the the show classes or the the stag mags these other ones that are they're motorcycle based but they're i wrote for show class yeah they're more uh they're more crowdfunded more than they are i love that fucking like the underground yeah. mags gnarly magazine i've yeah. seen this gnarly mag on there Fuck, high five yeah i'm talking about the saturated the old prime media type shit that was out there that just became too much and they don't even have they don't even care about the industry all they're caring about is an almighty dollar there's no love interest mm -hmm. they're just and it just it's the dollar it's the yeah. dollar so i think that checks out if you have something like um show class or if you have dice magazine i fucking love to, i still have my subscription to dice magazine i love getting those those that's a whole different thing i think Jesse James had a magazine for a while too. And I thought that was really fucking cool. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I love that. So I love having the tangible aspects of it going through. I even thought about doing a book of all of our artists and um, doing an annual yeah, hard copy book, go through the year and show all the bad, badass stuff. And just have it there, do a write up on people and have it. I still may do that because I love that idea. I love film. I love having documentation yeah. of it. And, um, I don't know. I think it'd be cool to do that. I think it would mean a lot. People have a hardcover book. I don't like the way, when I say, so let me retract that. So when I say magazines, I don't like the counter fucking bullshit where you're just getting hit with an ad every page. I hope we can get away from that. But yeah, these underground magazines, I'll support them wholeheartedly. Yeah. Like I said, it would be cool to have those things in the paint world. It, it's just a small When I first got thing. into it, I don't know if you met Roundy. Um, he's out there with um, Weiner and Bugs and those guys mm -hmm. as well. Roundy and I were really good friends. He's my boy. But when I first started Paint Huffer, that's what I was going to do, was going to do Huffer Mag. And I was going to start a magazine and do it. And I talked to Weiner, L. Weiner, and he had a magazine, or he still does have a magazine. I don't know how much he's doing it now. But um, it was fucking badass, and I couldn't wait for the next issue. Yeah, We grew up in that era. We would get a magazine in the mail or whatever. I get Thrasher magazine. Fuck, dude, I skated. I can't wait to see who's on the cover yeah. of Thrasher magazine. When it went from paper to all of a sudden to glossy stuff, I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, they're doing well. Like, they're, they're increasing it. Yeah. So that type of stuff I love. I just hate the fake bullshit of it. Like, hey, man, we're going to show you pictures, but then we're going to saturate you with stupid bullshit. So that's where I kind of checked out. But well, advertisement is how, it's how unfortunately, we do it, right? it's how the bills get paid because so all this. Let me ask you this. Do you think Instagram and Facebook is going to get to a point where you're having to pay for your advertising? Because right now I could go post 300 pictures tonight free. Yeah, I mean, finish? I think we're always going to have that because it. it's like the, the concept behind it is that mm -hmm. you like this. Look at. Think about your page like a bike show or a car show, right? Absolutely. Your car in a car show is part of the content of why people come to the show. Yep. Right? Yep. So if I made it to where it's unobtainably ridiculous for you to be into the show, mm -hmm. like you had to pay $1,500 to get your car in there? Yeah. Fuck no, that. dude. Like, oh, I can't just pay 30 bucks like everybody else probably does. Right. You right. know, so you're the content that the people come to see that they are advertising off of dude i i'm so fucking like ecstatic when i have somebody who hits me up like even last night i had this guy hit me up and he's like man you posted my stuff oh my god thank you i'm like dude that makes my day i'm yeah. like you know what man high five dude congratulations you finally stopped got off your ass did something fucking badass you know if if i'm your accolade on that high five dude yeah that makes me feel amazing man so yeah i've I feel you on that. I, I just hope that 
we're not going to get to a point where it's too well the thing is that that social media right now for a lot of us it, it feels good mm-hmm. the dopamine hits of like getting likes getting followers yeah. blah blah, blah. Sure. but sure sure everything unfortunately passion is what gets us all into everything but money rules the world it does right can't do any of this shit without money right. can't have a podcast without money sun's up bills are due that's what it, i say all the time so yeah, you gotta have it, it right. in, it's a, a tool. in a sense all these youtube videos of all these people that people like to watch every day mm-hmm. like i watch rogan every day sure right so he posts something i put it on yep now with the tvs everywhere i usually watch it on deal he's a millionaire yep but if he had a pay model i would pay for it yeah right right other people that i follow i pay sure. I, I pay on their patreon I pay on their things because I understand what it means to and do And that's that my shit. question is do you think we're going to get to that point with Instagram where we're going to have to start paying for, for We won't content. have to do that. But I think that eventually we're going to get to a point where right now let's say let's say if you're a content creator and you want to put your shit behind a paywall, right? Mm-hmm. Meaning that you can come see our magazine but you can only see it if you pay the 5.99 a month. Sure. Right? Yep. Then you get access to all this shit. Right. Kind of like an OnlyFans. <laughs> kind of right? like an OnlyFans, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. The thing is that, like, eventually it's going to probably go that way for a lot of people because right. as podcasts, especially the way I'm pushing mine, I, I don't ever want to do that. But right. if I get to the point where it's like we can't grow it mon- mon- monetarily, right. you know what I mean? Then I'm going to have to find a way to make it you more profitable to. so that I can do this more for a living. And that's pretty much what I was getting at. I think it's going to get to that point where we're going to have to start doing that type of a thing. And it's going to eventually come to that. I just don't want to, I just don't want to, I mean, if somebody can't afford that $6 a month or $10 a month, I would hate to close the door on them. So it's like this happy, it's like this thing in my head where I'm like, I hope it's free and people can always enjoy it. You don't have to come to a point where you'd ever have to do that. Maybe this is an asshole thing for me to say, but if you can't afford $6 a month on something, you probably don't need to be on social media. You need to figure out your life. (laughs) Exactly. No, I feel you, man. I think, um, I think people understand that they have to see all the calories that are burned behind the scenes. You know, all of a sudden when people start watching stuff or they see content or whatever, they think that's just so simple and we make it so seamless and so easily. I, 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 I've been on the fence where what I would like to do with all of this is uh, I would like to hire somebody to come in here and run the Rush. producing. Nice. Um, but also help create video content. What about both. Jesse? He, he doesn't have the video capabilities on that. Oh, gotcha. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. It's not that he and couldn't he's, learn. Well, he's it's into just music, though, too. He's though. into music. Yeah. He, yeah. he needs to focus on his music. Sure. You know, he's got one foot in wanting to be a painter, one foot in being a musician, and he's not yeah, giving 100% either should. one. He needs to go all in on one side or the other. High five. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Um, But I need the consistency. I need someone that can come do this. Mm -hmm. And I want it to be a point where the podcast can pay that person. Yes. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I think it might be close. I mean, like I said, we've been using the sponsorship money, the Patreon money Mm -hmm. to buy these cameras, buy this equipment, get to this point. Yep. And... It should be like, okay, we, we're here now. Now I want to chill and just right. collect some of this. There has to be the traction. I pay my employees really well. Yeah. And they're like, wow, you gave me another raise. You gave me another review like that. I'm huge on that in the come up. Like, if I'm coming up, you're coming up with me. I had a lot of respect for, there's a lot of blues musicians back in the day that would do that. They would pay their, their background band. And they pay them really well or they pay them really shitty. So there's... Um, James Brown, you know, he was he was known as paying him. He would treat him like shit, but he paid him well. It's up to where people were attracted and they wanted to stay on yeah. and to stay with him. George Thorogood, he had his band. He paid him amazing. They stayed with him for 30 years. I'm the same way. If you want a job, you want to come up with me, I'm going to pay you really well because I don't want you to go in a way. I'm not paying you so much to where you're going to so you're, you're take advantage of me. Well, there's, there's there, a that's a double-edged line. sword because mm-hmm. put yourself in my shoes. Okay. Right, I'm paying someone to like. Okay, no tattoo artist. Yep. Right. You have to be able to. Your value and worth is based on what you can produce here. Sure, it is. Not the fact that you're here. Right. No, 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 no. Yeah, you gotta. Right? You gotta show. So me you, you if you aren't, if you are not on the level, yeah, get eighty six. It. Yeah. Don't do. Yeah. But you have potential. You get potential oh, yeah, you pay. Can walk. Right. I follow you. You know what I'm saying? You well, yeah, you and I grew up that yeah. way. We yeah, were so handy. Yeah, you, don't, exactly. yeah, you can't yeah. just like, 
Yeah. Being, you know, like, because, okay, so I've been doing this for almost 20 years now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I make good money paying helmets and bikes. Right. That doesn't mean that right. you get it because you started working here six months Fuck ago. no. Don't I mean, do that. No, hell no. But if you work your ass off and you start accumulating enough skills right. to knock more off of my workload. Yep then you were worth more money. Absolutely. Yeah, you get, you have to structure it that way. No, that's very well said. That's exactly that's that totally is, that how, is how working it. class yeah. America works. Totally, totally. You know, if you want to go get a job where you you know somebody so you got a job and you half ass it, like, I, I don't have, you can't fail here. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Well, to fail your yourself, it'd be well, yourself not showing up or not whatever. Right. Yeah, well, you, a, a, f a massive failure in a small business like this could be the end of the business. Mm -hmm. So if you want me to get, if you want to make the kind of money that where you're make your almost partner level making good money or if or any of that shit, like mm -hmm. the, here's another thing. This is another mm -hmm. concept, and I don't know if this is right, but this is a thought of mine. No, oh, yeah. Nobody that works for somebody ever wants to hear this, but the truth is that like if I hire you to work here and you want to make nine hundred dollars a week, you want to take home nine hundred dollars a week. Sure. Your eighteen hundred dollars a week is my cost to have you. Right. Right. That's it. That is six, almost eight thousand dollars a month. Yep. That means that you need to produce. Have to. At least ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month. Yeah. To make sense to have. Otherwise, you otherwise you shouldn't have a resource. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. No, no, no. I follow you, and that's the way that it should be. With our company, like even ramping up as fast as we have, even this year coming up on top of it, what I'm getting at, I'll scale it according to their performance. It's a whole package, right? Their yeah. performance, if they're on time, if they show up, if they give the dedication and love, all that goes into there. But what I'm what I'm getting at too, though, is that instead of waiting another six months for a review, I'm often the type of employer that I'll walk in and be like, okay, now you're making this much an hour. And they're like, oh, whoa, what the fuck? And I'm like, yeah, keep going because you are, you're ramping me up. Yeah. You're working with me. You can't, so you don't have people. To stop you real quick, yeah. I hire somebody to wet sand here, right? Okay. They do good at the first week because yep. they're, they're all excited. It's they're excited. They're job. paying attention. They sure. want to do a good job. Next yeah. week, they get comfortable. Oh, yeah. It happens to every business, and then you have to have facet. you have to have a talk with. Them. Hey, man, right. like you're you're missing a lot of stuff. Right, right, yep. I was like, if you do this the way I showed you, then you won't miss it. And if you do this consistently, then right. you get to the next level. I had an employee recently that said that they were like, "Hey, man, I'm not you. I can't just be here all the time." And I'm like, "No, no, no. I don't want you here all the time. I want you when you are here." to show up on time and to give me a hundred percent because I'm going to give you that way too. And they couldn't, I had to you know, get rid of them. Now I've had other employees with me for a long time and they're like constantly like, Hey, what do you need? What do you want me to do? How do I do this? They don't sit around. They're not sitting around waiting for something to happen. They're, they're definitely engaged. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that I was too. When I was, when I was young, I worked in a body shop and this body shop actually folded overnight. Right. So it was called Excalibur body shop. And I was paying $416 for my studio apartment. Studio apartment's like a flat, small little box. You know, mm -hmm. this is, I was 19. And um, I took out, see back then you, just, you had a paper, Sunday and Wednesday. You have to go through there and you have to read everything and be like, okay. Well, I found this thing it said four color offset printer starting at $12 an hour. But I'm like, oh fuck yeah, I got this. So what I did was I went to the library, checked out a book on four color offset printing. I took it into the foreman. This guy, his name was Dick Goldberg, went in to saw Dick in his office. And I'm like, hey, man, I don't know anything about printing, but I just went to the library. I checked out this book. I'm going to read it tonight. I need a job, man. My the other company I was working for, this body shop, the guy was a douchebag, probably some cokehead, fucking blowing it up his nose, mm -hmm. folded. I'm out of a fucking job. And that's the worst fucking feeling in the yeah. world. My sister married one of my childhood friends. And he owned, a, he owned a Shot Creek company, so uh, pouring mud. Mm -hmm. He came to me that night and was like, I'll give you a job tomorrow morning, 5, 5 a.m., I'm gonna go pour concrete. And I was like, oh, I'm all over this. I said, but wait, do me a favor. Let me go talk to this company tomorrow, this printing company, and see if I can get a job. I got the job. I was making $12 an hour, but then I was making $18 an hour overtime once I got to past my 40. Yeah. Oh, I worked my fucking ass off. I worked it off so much that they were like, hey, you're gonna be lead foreman to this job. Those are the type of things that you and I are. We're that type of people where we're mm -hmm. gonna figure it out, we're gonna go in there. There wasn't YouTube, there wasn't even a fucking phone. You didn't have a phone back then, yeah. there was pagers, right? So, but we were that, that dedicated. And I think that's why we, when I see that, I'm gonna embrace that and give that person a hug and be like, dude, let's make some money together. Let's fucking do this. If I'm, the company's making money and you're that top tier with me, 
You know, we have friends that have companies and they lost people. They lose people all the time. Or you're like, you yeah. fucking left or you left? I think what happens is, is sometimes when you make a whole lot of money, you forget the people that help you get to that fucking point, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I was going, that sense of it. Not the fuck offs, because the fuck offs, you can't have them. Get the fuck, get the fuck off my ship. Like, get out. You know what I mean? You're just going to burn me down. All the people that are negative, like, oh, well, you know, I don't know. I'm going to complain about this, complain about this. We all have problems every fucking day. Yeah. I love it when I text you and you and I are like, oh, I'll be there in 15 minutes. Okay, cool. Bam. Cookie cutter fucking process. Yeah. You didn't know what I fucking went through today to get here. You didn't even see me fucking 15 minutes ago. Some dude almost ran into me. You know, I'm pissing him off. I'm like, fuck this shit, man. Fuck all this. You know what I mean? You didn't see the calories that I burned to get here. But it's not your fucking business. Yeah. I don't come in here griping about 30 things I could have this morning. Yeah. I don't like people that are on my staff that have to come in and do that. You know, this isn't that type of thing. I want you to have positive. Let's go make some fucking money and do this. If you get somebody in here controlling in there, I see, yeah. dude, who wouldn't want to work here? You built this up. This is, dude, if I'm a fucking high school kid or fucking yeah. even a beginning to get into college i want to i want to have a job at fast life there's no fucking a lot way. of people have always wanted it but they the thing is that like that job doesn't pay a lot of money so what but the thing is you still get to fucking work if if that job right there and the youtube started making a lot of mm -hmm. money then it would reflect in that but right and i see you as a good employer i don't see you well like, you, i mean it depends on who you ask well i'm hard yeah but i'm hard because yeah, well, you, you have to be. you know I've, I've my brother's dealt with he doesn't like me much because of this, but the thing is... Your brother likes you. But the thing is that at the end of the day, you know, it's like I've never had a big business, right? Right. It's not big. If, if someone works here, I look at it like this. Like, I do need someone to sand this bike. Yeah. But now that sanding that bike is costing me an extra, let's just say I'm paying someone $500 a week. Right. right? Not a lot of money, but sure. it's an entry-level job. Yeah. $500 a week. Right. That's two thousand dollars a month. Yep. I, what do I have that's worth sanding for two thousand dollars a month? I don't paint cars. Mm -hmm. I don't run that much volume. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I feel you. So. I feel you. So it's okay. It's a very niche job to have for. Somebody. Well, you know, you look at it like this. Like, there's there's two things you said that I want to touch on: helping someone get to the top, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there's 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 way different. There's a lot of perspectives in that. There is right. So you let's just say that you come here, you help me sand, or mm -hmm. you sand, mm -hmm. and I then I paint the bikes and go. Right, it helped me. Yeah, but then I paid you. Right. Therefore, yeah. There's no like I owe you ten no, years. You don't from owe now. me shit. Exactly. You give me the foot in the door for my for my future professions, so that I can say that I worked at Fast Life Garage because that's going to hold the clout. That's going to hold the yeah, upper so echelon. The other the other aspect of this this uh, scenario is. You sand for me. Mm -hmm. You know how to do it correctly because I've showed you and you've actually accomplished it and done it correctly. And other people in the industry are going to know but that. But do you start to get lazy? Now, I oh, yeah, am doing me. I'm doing other parts of this business assuming that you know how that to sand confident. correctly right. and that those parts are going to be hanging in the booth, wiped down, ready to paint. Yep. So that whenever you're like, hey, Jace, yep. they're ready, yep. then I come downstairs from doing what I'm doing. Oh, dude. To paint. And you're talking about every body shop in America that's gone and through body. And it's not man. sanded correctly. Right. It's not wiped down correctly. Right. So now now it's 430. And yep. now you have to take these things you just cleaned back to the sanding table and finish your job. Yep. Now it's 7 o'clock. Yep. Now you just, like, time is money in a body shop. Oh, fuck yeah, it is. And so now. Time what, is money in any business. Now what but was, uh, like, that little $500 a week that I was giving you. Right. Now it's costing me money. It is. Give you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. We have that too because I've, I've had employees that will ship stuff and I'll have a customer call me and go, hey, man, I got this order, but I also got this guy's order. I'm like, oh, motherfucker, just keep it. Or I'll have to say this or like, you know, I'm always hooking you yeah. know, customers up because it's not their, their deal. But hey, man, I got this one instead of this or this color wasn't what I like. Can I exchange it or whatever? If it's a customer's fault and they're like, I get that a lot where people order stuff and then five seconds later they're like, oh, wait, man, I meant to hit this one instead. All right, I'll work with you. And that's time you got to eat into it. If it's an employee that is constantly just not paying attention and making it work, I just pull them aside and be like, hey, look. Now you probably got some shit. Let's just go ahead and not hold off on this job for a while. Come back to me when your head's clear. There was something attracted that I liked you. That's why I hired you. Life is constantly going like this. I'm hoping that I'm always getting you on this upper level. Some days are going to be bad. Some days aren't going to be perfect. But what you have to do when you come and work for somebody, you have to be up here. 
100% of the fucking time. I have to show up. I would always show up before bosses too. Like I was that type of, I've always been that way. I'm like, hey man, I'm not gonna be late. I'm not gonna fucking yeah. make you wait on me. I'm not gonna make you second guess me. You and I are both that way out of it. I could imagine having something, and in paint world, you know, and this is something I tell everybody on Paint Huffer every day. You wanna get good? Stop fucking making mistakes. Stop letting shit go that has drip marks into it. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Paint is one of those things where you can crystal clear it and see it. If there's a flaw, you see it. You see it. If the tattoo, it. you see it. You're you're not there to explain yourself. Once you hand it to me, I'm gonna be like, oh wow, okay, that's perfect. Let's pass it on. I can only begin to imagine having preppers that fail, and you're like, dog, and then wonder why they're not the growing fuck? in the company. Totally. Exactly. Because the competence of doing that job so and eliminating hard. the the mistakes is what gets you to the next level right. to learn the next skill. Right. Right. So what's a hard thing to do is to find that person who's hungry, that person who wants to have it. Now, as far as you pain, that's that's on you because you can if they go back. There was a buddy of mine that works for Paul Reed Smith Guitars. He's going to go work for Fender in Corona, California next week. He got the job. He was a. I think like a ten dollar an hour employee just doing finishing and sanding for Paul Reed, but because he has Paul Reed on his resume now, oh he's a shoe in. Oh you work for Paul Reed? Oh we know those guys have a high class of standards. Same thing with the Fast Life Garage. We know he has a high class of. Oh yeah you're in. I would trust you. Who was the guy that um, you just went out and visited in Oklahoma? He hit me up, uh, motorcycle builder. Um, fuck it. Dave Covington? Covington, yeah. Fucking love him, man. Love him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love his bikes. Paul Cox just hit us up. He was wanting to do a, a certain color. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, Paul. We'll yeah. do a Berserker Flake. Yeah, are you kidding me? I think people that are that dedicated, I don't think Dave would have been around forever if he would have tolerated or had employees that have yeah, stepped you on him. You can't. Right? So, so, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of the, that's the, for me as a, as a, owner of a paint shop that is like mm -hmm. why i scaled down to the point to where i don't have to rely on anybody else right and i did that too because it's over. stressful it is but it's more stressful too but but doing everything yourself when i do too, everything though. myself everything's done right it is so when i sand a helmet down there i know it's done right right because and i also know what i'm getting myself into every day i sand do you have somebody now that's helping you uh my buddy zach was kind of up here at princeton a little bit but He's he he's kind of well off. He doesn't really need to be here. Didn't I meet somebody last night though that was helping you? Oh, that's Matt. Matt's Man. a friend of mine. He does my body work for me. Okay, so he does. Yeah. So, yeah. but you know when you but he does he does that at his shop. I don't do body work here. High five. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, shit. If somebody else wants, to, if I have a fulfillment company that wants to ship for Paint Huffer, if I know that they're not going to fuck up, yeah. that's cool. If I have a T-shirt company, I think the more that we're getting into this, the more technology that we have, the more people or companies are going to help out, not just the one thing. So if you can send your your tank over to down the street and he's 100% yeah. all the time, are you finding that that's a good thing versus having somebody here, obviously? Well, yeah, because first off, I don't want my, you know, my shop is, I try to keep it clean and body work is the dirtiest part. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, not that I'm trying to put all my dirty shit onto my buddy Matt, but the thing is, you know, with his business, Hazmat Designs, he does paint too. And I should, here's the deal. I, I turn down hundreds of thousands of dollars of work every year, right? Every year. I, yesterday, four messages mm -hmm. for jobs that are easy, that are good paying, but mm -hmm. I, I've already got people waiting months and months for helmets and jobs. I can't right. slide a little easy one in right quick. No. Don't I would that. love yeah. to, no, you know, if my you. brother would have stayed around and, and right. that'd be, hey, dude, here's a here's a two thousand dollars black Dyna, knock yeah. it out. Go to town. Yeah. You know, but. But your brother's at the end that of the age, day, right? at he, the end of the day, my name is still on it. Therefore, right. my quality has to be on it. Yep. And I haven't found anybody and that's to a hard put the thing, quality. Man. Yeah. I had an employee came in recently about that, and she was crying and like, you know, I don't know, no, no, no. I'm like, she goes, I'm not you. And I'm like, don't understand that. But at the end of the day, all this shit falls down on Brian. It doesn't matter yeah. where it comes from. And I think that's a lot of employees, they don't understand that. So I think, I don't know, maybe this is good when we do a podcast like this for somebody who's young in high school right now if you want to get in the custom game don't come half ass if you sacrifice if it. you make the sacrifice if you're in high school right now and you want to get into the paint world period right go apprentice yep figure out your finances on your other end totally or go get it i mean a lot of like if i was a if i was a shop running more work i would hire somebody at a very low rate yeah. to do apprenticeship type work for sure i would but yeah. I, I that's also now i'm now i'm married to the shop every day right I can't go on a trip because this guy works for me. It's a juggling. And he needs to have a job this week, but he's right. not good enough of, he's not skilled enough, that's a better way yeah. to put it, 
to be here by himself to finish jobs. Right. Therefore, when I'm out of town, the shop is shut down. Yep. And so I had grand dreams of having a, a, a business that operated while I was gone, but I have not been able to find competent people right. to put in the, the, the effort, skill, and desire that I had to to make this brand. So you and I are both in the same position where I've got the paint booth, I've got the thing there, I could hire a painter full time because people hit us up every five seconds. Hey, can you paint this, can you paint this? Yeah, we could, but do I wanna micromanage and do I wanna sit there and stress out every day on time? Do I wanna, or do I wanna just be on a level where I'm like, okay, you know what? I've got so many hours in the day, I can check out, do stuff like this. Yeah. And I think this is gonna grow my business even more because getting out, talking, meeting with people, meeting painters and all that, versus taking on another $100,000 job or $200,000, money's not everything. It's, yeah, not. it's not. It's not. You gotta have that time, you gotta have that balance. It's a constant juggling. I mean, we're juggling every day and trying to, but I think life kind of molds us into what this is. So we've got the right oh, yeah, resources man. now. And it's cool, man. I mean, that's why I'm like, I can't believe to have some type of a thumbprint in an industry, like I said, if I was to go pass away tomorrow, if I die on this, man, I'm so proud of myself that I did this. I didn't listen to anybody who was like, oh, you know, that was kind of hard and you should not fucking do that. Fuck you. Don't, don't listen to those guys. Just fucking, and I'm telling this to any fucking kid out there right now, like, go do something. Don't listen to anybody. Yeah. Don't fuck it. Just do it. Just do it. Sometimes I feel like what, what uh, you know, I, I'm pretty hard headed in a lot of things, but the thing is that my hard headedness is kind of got me. I don't like to say here, like, oh, I'm successful. I, like, I'm surviving. I eat well. You know what I mean? I, I eat We good. all are. So that's got me here. Now, it doesn't mean it's right, right? It doesn't mean that it is right. It just means that it's right. worked for me it has it's your um, deal yeah. when i was 20 i didn't have an older brother that figured out life a little bit faster right 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 and for me like i spent my 20s trial and error yep like oh that didn't work oh this business didn't work <laughs> exactly. it didn't work that way right oh that wasn't a good idea oh i ate shit on that one and then yeah. you mold it all into this like perfect idea of things to chase and things to just know they're they're smoke and mirrors basically for sure and so for sure now I, I pass up a lot of things because I know on the back end of that job it might not be as as lucrative as as it sh as it could be right right so you just don't like there's those guys that start bike like paint shops now like th that's what I was wanting to kind of get into is like the idea of the big custom paint shop mm -hmm. I don't know that it's it's valuable anymore yeah like I don't think you can really. To do I, a production shop? Yeah, I don't think it's it's very More hard. Fucking headache is yeah. what. It, yeah, it seems like. But I think this, what we're doing more with Paint Huffer now, and even my travels, even where I'm, why I'm here, is working with big companies on bigger projects. And what I mean by that, you, Metal Flake is in everything. You don't realize it could be in a keyboard. It could be in a, you know, a, a, a different. Platform. We're in Chevrolet. In Chevrolet, we have inserts in cars that have paint up for Metal Flake. Mm -hmm. There's things that I need to do that to to scale bigger and larger. Yeah. So we have all these corporations that use our stuff. Right now, I've got a um, a company that's doing injection molding that they want to have Metal Flake into, but they need to have something that's solvent proof UV. They can't have it fade out. Um, carnival companies that build carnival rides back when you know yeah. we all would go to like you know out and stuff. They're huge into Metal Flake. And there's other things too that I can't talk about because there's industry specific things, but there, but there's a lot of things in your avenue that you can do in, in bigger aspects versus having a paint booth and having the headache and doing all the, and being the, uh, the, um, the go-to for Harley Davidson and having yeah. that headache, you know what I mean? That'd be well, awesome. So let, let's, yeah. let, let's look at it this way. For a lot of airbrush guys out there mm -hmm. that, wanna, that don't necessarily want to have a full production shop, but they want to find a way to provide their skills, whether it's airbrush graphics, pinstriping, to a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. For one, start, start traveling because you, have to. you might live in Phoenix where there's an abundance of opportunity and competition, yeah. but there might not be an Albuquerque right. and what would it be for you to jump in your car yep. and go there and, or, or like start hitting up auto body shops in that exactly. area go hey do y'all guys ever do custom paint yep. I'm willing to travel and come out for work a couple days at a time or weeks at a time I'm so work. proud that you did that because you would go everywhere yeah you've gone all over the states you're like hey man I'm gonna go check this out or go there from there that's the thing though that's yeah. why when I hear people like bitching about like not making money I'm like well, how are you yeah. crossing every T and dot in every eye right they're not 
you know are you are you or do you think you deserve some comfortable life right like like you know like if you got a job working for some corporate office which is probably not comfortable but do you you chose totally. to be chose, yeah, in this yeah, yeah. like very uncertain totally. business right, right? right and so you have to do a lot more that you don't get those comforts of yeah. 401k like we said yeah. and things like there's that no you have to bust your ass yeah. yeah there's no pension in this at all I if this is drying up you you have to you have to see when certain parts of your industry are going to start to dry up you have to be aware that before it's dry totally that way you can already be putting sure. in a little bit of work in these other areas so that it does this like right. instead of like every and day. then you're like where do i go and then you try to build it up you every know day. what i mean every day every industry there's people out there right now that are building tractors that are the same way they're having to do the same exact thing or whatever whatever you do in this world you had better always stay on your toes be well the awareness is everything i think that's one thing that really was like the big attraction when i first met you i was like this dude gets out and he goes he knows everybody you didn't just wake up one day and know all these companies simpson what have you 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 went out there and met them and did it and they saw that they were and that's what attracted that your yeah. hard work and you getting out there and hustling you're a hustler we're yeah. hustlers no doubt about it and i'm not like you know oh my god you know i'm a hustler whatever like i'm bling bling but you know what fuck i'm not gonna be fucking going broke i'm not yeah. i'll die try you know die hard trying fucking doing that it's rad dude i love this life well that's what's good about like like the you know when, when people hit me up and they want to get into the custom paint thing and i always tell them to start out learning how to paint totally you know learn like how to everything. do every aspect of the paint job yeah you know and then and then as you're learning those core skills yep. focus on the art on the side that's and right. then no matter what, because custom paint is not guaranteed to be a, a viable career for you. But right. if you're good at buffing, you can always have a job. Absolutely. Yeah. You Those know, kind of jobs are not the most glamorous, but every shop needs a quality polisher. They do. Every one. Absolutely. And it, it's, it, you have to put yourself in some kind of yep. trance and just be in the motions and make it happen. But yeah you'll never go broke did you used to watch a lot of stuff like people are watching us right now talking about this did yeah. you used to watch a lot of like not motivators but people like we would look at basketball players right yeah like sean kemp we love sean kemp sean was out of high school just banging all these chicks had all these all these babies everywhere fucking life right loved it but how did he get there do you didn't see him at three in the morning shooting hoops shooting hoops shooting hoops shooting hoops shooting hoops all the day you just saw the limelight of it you know i i love jordan love 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 jordan but I love the fact that he was so fucking dominant that he was just like, all right, look, I'm going to fucking show you. I'm going to come out there hitting it hard and just going. So we grew up seeing that. And I hope to God that somebody, somebody's right now seeing this and just going, you know what? All right. Thanks, guys. I'm going to do this. I'm going to travel. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to go learn. I'm going to be mm -hmm. humble. That's one thing that you and I have seen. Have you seen that where this industry's forced some of those egos and attitudes to calm the fuck down a little mm -hmm. bit because man when you and i first got into it it was people and you and i talked about somebody the other day just egos and fucking attitudes and i'm like all right man somebody's gonna be better than you in a few minutes watch yeah and then it's humblesome you know what i mean yeah. so that's the thing it's like i think if you just stay true to yourself don't be counterfeit don't come off like you're the shit if you do a couple paint jobs and then come at me with paint heifer and be like, oh, what's up, dog? You didn't throw this up on your side. I used your flake. Yeah, you did. Keep going. I'm not putting it up yet, man. Yeah. If, if it's, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to put that up. I don't owe you. I don't yeah. owe you shit, dude. But when they do it and then they're like, holy fucking shit. Thank you so much, man. Okay. That means the world to me. That's what you have, should have. I, I deal with that a lot. I feel like a lot of people want to be on the podcast that haven't quite made a mark yet. Right, they're listeners, and they they want to be on that path, and they yeah. want to be. I, I think they want it for the wrong reasons. You know what I mean? And totally. that's why I think that they'll yeah. they've always struggled to. Not that my podcast is like Rogan or anything like that, but just they want to they want to be respected amongst their peers, and sure. they just haven't done anything yet. Yeah, you know. Yep. Um, but when it comes to um, like we were you were saying like the motivation shit, it's like I'm not I, I don't listen to motivational speakers, but I'm I'm. I'm, I'm I'm in tune. Yeah, you know, right. And so, like, I'm constantly looking at angles and and cause and effect and and just how things work in the sense to where 
you notice, okay, like I tried to market this way or I tried to paint that way. And then I, I see the trends on social media going this way with paint jobs. Yep. So I need to learn it. Yep. You know, or like Leaf. Leaf I've tried Leaf my entire life, but it wasn't till I saw how much more people were doing the metal flake, the leaf, the pinstriping, yep. how that was become, going to become a dominant part of the custom paint industry. Right. If you left one of those out, it was kind of like, wait a second. You the only thing I mean? that's not that's not necessary in, in like what I would say the flake paint jobs that we do and you provide mm -hmm. is airbrush. Right. Though those I learned to airbrush because we were doing these affliction bikes back right. in the day. We were. And we were putting skulls and pirate themes and shit like that. And that's not popular anymore. It's not. So it's no. like it's good to have that skill. I think it's great. But I struggle with the fact that I spent so much of my life yeah. doing that Jordan shit, being up here till two in the morning, yep. three in the morning, having an airbrush in my hand every day to learn how to do it. Totally. That now it's not even a big enough part of my business to where I could honestly get rid of it. Yeah, oh, you're talking about the airbrush. Well, I think the talent part of it, because when you do a portrait, Lord of mercy, I've There's, seen I some do bad the portraits, portraits, but at the same time, I can knock out three helmets without the portrait. Yeah. And make more money and you put can. out more products. No, no, I'm just saying as far as an yeah. artist, for like respect, when I look at that, okay, like I'm a portrait artist, like a tattoo portrait, yeah. right? Portraits are one of those things, man, where you can either do it or you cannot. So yeah. it's, there, there's no, it's the same thing as with any of this industry. You're going to know if you didn't body work that correctly or if you didn't get to the next level, when you look at something, you're going to have that attraction. But I see, think at the same time, like sometimes for me with the portraits, it's like I'm bored with them now. Yeah. Like I haven't yeah. really. Right. I've gotten better. Hold right. on. I've gotten better at them, but I have not evolved visually far past what I started doing with that Samuel Jackson one. When you look at a picture, that instant reaction. So what I would tell my employees too that worked in the tattoo shop with me, I would say this. Watch them when they get up from the chair and they walk over and they look in the mirror. That first millisecond when they look and they go, oh, wow. Or they're going to go, like that, you're gonna squint and look at it. When I look at your portraits, I knew immediately I was like, oh, whoa, he did Yellow Wolf, or whoa, he did Sam Jackson, oh, whoa. It's that attraction, yeah. instantly, that's what hits you. I fucking love that, dude. That's what it's all about right there. That's all your nights that you spent hardworking, whether is. you were airbrushing the skulls or whatever, dude, you got it. Now, have you become complacent because you know that you can do it on this level? Yeah, dude, you can shoot free throws all fucking day long, you're, yeah. you're swishing them, right? You're gonna have times where you're just like, drinking some beers, you don't feel like doing it. I, I got to the point with portraits, I was like, fuck this shit, dude. I don't wanna do portraits anymore. I'm not having fun with it. I was the same way, just got bored with it. I'm like, don't you want something like even more fun? Like, I love doing traditional tattoos. It's clean, bold, fun, my style. Yeah. I like clean lines. Everything's about a line and a tattoo. Um, but I can knock out portraits too, though. I would have fun with it. But it just became to the point where it was almost like forced to do yeah. it, and that's what that thing is too, that's that fine line, where you get in these jobs where people are like, hey, I wanna do Pee Wee Herman, or I wanna do this fucking, do whatever, you're like, all right, no, let's do something, let me do my thing. Yeah, yeah, And I think now, you're at that point now. Well, I have that, I have that down, but yeah. it's still, like I want you to, I want, like when you look at this first helmet to when you look at this one from three years later, as I've been focused on helmets, you see progression oh, you do. in every area. You do. So with well, the I airbrush, do. like, I haven't airbrushed in full color in probably 10 years. Okay. I, I've, I've, I lost, I didn't like it. Like I, I, I didn't think it fit the motorcycle world very well. Sure. When I did lowriders, it fit. But now it's been, I'm so out of practice right. that I want to bring it back into my thing. Right. right. But my time is so like. Right. Are you gonna go out there and be like a Picasso? So put it like this, hours? like usually when I do a portrait, I, I, I block off the entire day to prep it, it's just like you. you if you're prepping for a portrait on a on someone's arm, sure. you're you're setting up your area, you're getting all your shit ready so that everything's right there, so that you can just, you know, go at it. Do you do the pencil trick? I do. I have like three different methods. It depends okay. on the type. It depends on what I'm doing it on. Yep. It depends on the actual picture because sure. some pictures are not. Some some you can cut the shadows out and make little stencils and just keep cutting and, and build layers. For sure. Or some you have to pan, uh, transfer like a tattoo. Like a tattoo. And then just kind of paint by numbers it. That's right? what I, I would just take the pencil and just yeah. do the whole. You know what I'm talking about. So, the the thing is that like for me to do color now, mm -hmm. it would take 
almost a whole day for me at least to Dude. get all my tones. Steve Gibson hit me up the other day. And he's like, "Hey man, check this out." He goes, "I know you're in you're you like to do artwork too as you're not just the owner of Paint Effort, but you do portraits and stuff." He showed me this portrait that he had, but all over his studio floor was every single color tone, just like an oil painter would do. Complimentary, secondary, tertiary, all these colors and I'm like, "Dude, what the fuck? And he figured out his formulation, his mixtures for all of this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, there's somebody who doesn't care what the fuck is going on with the rest of the world, the money, the end of it from there. He's so passionate about it that he just wants to get into that. And I saw that with you because you were the same way. When I look at 1130 at night or midnight, I'm like, oh, there's Jace drawing out his next sketch. A lot of painters don't even do that. They'll just tape it and go with the flow. And I think that's smart how you do that, how you show your concept sketch. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that's rad, dude. That's such a cool thing to have. Do you give those concept sketches to the people that I have they ask for them, but I just follow them and I That'd keep them. That's fucking rad, dude. Because every once in a while, like, I'll, I'll be stuck with looking for a line. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. And, yeah. uh, and I'll pull it back out and go, I like this helmet. Now, what if I took this same paint scheme, but I changed it some? What about like... Um, like drawing on tablets because I eventually got into like dude I, I just ordered stuff. a big ass uh, Wacom that's the reason I built this new table mm -hmm. I ordered that 20 the 21 US or you got the 24 now Cintiq Cintiq it's, that's what I had yeah so I was the first one out of everybody that he knew in the tattoo world that had that right there was a guy named Cecil Porter he became pretty famous he did my arm he did my guitar and stuff but he was like what are you using I'm like I'm using Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop mm -hmm. on this thing. It was a 21-inch TV that you can rotate and you scale. I could draw on it, right? Yeah. So he was like, you're fucking kidding me. I'm like, no, what I'll do is I'll take a picture of your arm, bring it in there, and now I can draw it wrapped and have it conceptual sketch. But it's fun. It's yeah. a fun thing to draw on now for doing that. I would take Prisma colors all day long and draw it out and figure out you know mm -hmm. different tones. I would draw on a red Prisma and just kind of get yeah. your basic lines out from there. But... Um, now what I use, I'll use an iPad Pro and just use the um, Cinti or use the um, um, uh, Procreate. Yeah, and it's fucking rad, dude. I'm like, oh yeah, you know. What? So that's what I'm doing with my bike right now. So we just did all the work on the bike. I want to get like the intake, like I was saying, or not the intake, but the uh, the cam into it next. But I'm trying to figure out a color scheme for it. Like, but I've gone through a lot of things in my head, and I'm like all right, what do I want to do this? So I'm constantly drawing on there, but it helps technology now. The, um, what made you go with the Wacom? Like, that's fucking rad. Uh, I, I, I got a guy that does photography that's going to come out here and do some lessons that I'm yeah. paying him to teach me some things. Oh, there you go. And so he works on a Wacom pad for photo editing. Perfect. And I, I know Photoshop, I know, I, I know how to navigate what I need to do with it, Yeah. but I've never edited photos with Photoshop and he edits in Photoshop. Oh, and so, yeah. um, you know, I, I I am I have no problem paying someone to learn something, right? High five. And so Absolutely. my thing is, this dude's local in Dallas. He does great photography, but more yeah. importantly, his editing is something that I want to I want to pick up. Absolutely. And he uses a Wacom pad. Yep. Wacom stands for Washington Computer. It's a great company, man. I, dude, this is much like you and I are getting nerd on it. I got so fucking into it. I was like, oh my gosh, it came to a point where I couldn't do it mobile anymore. That's the only reason why. But my twenty one UX. You're gonna yeah. freak out on that. So I, I was also wanted because I thought it'd be easier for me, like when it comes to when I do get into the video editing stuff. Oh, perfect. Because I'll be able to bring it up and I just have it all right here and I can just move it more. Like I, 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 I'm I got hand eye coordination, but with a mouse it's different. Yeah. Plus I'm I'm about to upgrade all my vinyl cutting stuff. It, the big reason why I'm wanting to cut out drinking is because this has been my escape when art used to be my escape. Gotcha. That makes sense. So makes I'm trying sense. to. I'm not yeah. trying to cut it out of my life, but I'm trying right. to not be, not want to go to the bar all the time or go party with all my friends. Yeah. I want to be like, you know what? I'm not, I'm done with everything today, man. I want to go fucking like draw this new logo for my company on the computer so I can cut it out of vinyl. Fuck yeah! And now I have it for these other jobs. Like, Absolutely. I used to sit there with a mouse and I was scanning like Marilyn Monroe mm -hmm. on the computer, and I would literally make stencils. Yeah. Like uh, Mike Learn is the one that got me on to that love, shit. Love, love Mike. But we, I would make all these stencils, and I was like, all right, so now if I ever have to do a Marilyn Monroe, mm -hmm. I can just cut it out whatever size I want and then stencil it on. Love Mike. Yeah. But see, that's the thing. Back in the in the two thousands, the the paint jobs were so random. One day I would be doing 
a Hollywood uh, Marilyn Monroe theme, and the next day I'm doing a fucking pirate theme, and the next one is a dragon theme. It's like, right. so we, you know, we had to have all this shit and ready to go on the next one. Now, I have an airbrush. The last thing I airbrushed was uh, a uh, portrait, right? The, what or, portrait was the last one I did? You did yellow. You did that's uh, that's earlier this year. Was it? Did you? Well, you did your grandfather's helmet. That was last year. Yeah, that was mine. That was earlier this year too. Yeah. Right before, oh no, I did uh, Biggie recently. Oh fuck yeah! So I did Biggie for my buddy. Yep. And uh, that's last time I airbrushed. That was that was the middle of, of uh, August. Cool. So well, it's that's a weird there, one. And you got it, and that's the cool thing. But I think even having like another, what's cool is like when you're getting to this walk home too, it'll make you like, it's like coming home and seeing like your favorite Netflix show or whatever. Yeah. You're like fuck, I can't wait to get to it and go do it. On there, it's just that attraction on there. I didn't drink. I stopped drinking for like, I don't know, what, eight years? And people were like, what the fuck? Like, you don't party anymore? Like, you were the guy on the boat with like having strippers and like, you know, fucking hanging out and just getting wasted all the time and smoking out. And I loved it. But then I got to the point where I'm like, all right, I got to start a tattoo shop. I got to start a business. I have to have 100% dedication to it. Yeah. So there's a lot of people out there that say, oh, you're lucky. I'm like, really? I had to quit the vices going out to the bars yeah. every night and doing all that. You know, and I think it comes to the point when you find your trade or you find something that you're really passionate into, there's a lot of times, man, where it, it'll override everything. Like when I pick up a guitar, man, I lose, I'm like, it's five in the morning? Holy shit. Yeah. When we draw, holy shit, time just flew by and it flies by because this. But when we drink a lot of times, you know, when you go out and you're like, oh man, this is the best night. We're getting so fucked up. This is awesome. But then there's other times when you're out with your boys or whatever. And I see it too, like where I'm like, I don't know if I really feel like drinking tonight, but I kind of feel like I have to because everybody else is fucking drinking. I want to get on their level, and I want to. But then it's like forced. I'm like, man, I could be back at the shop right now doing so much more productive yeah. shit. There's balances, right? You mm -hmm. have those nights on there, but whenever I was drawing or whatever, I was doing something for the company. I never felt like I was wasting time. I don't. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I'll get into that. So I think you're gonna see that because I can tell. Like just you and I being boys, I could tell over the past like whatever like when i was listening to your podcast when i was going down to austin last night i was like yeah i see jace is going to start to check out on drinking a little bit i just mm -hmm. had that vibe that i was kind of catching from yeah you. i'm hoping you yeah, know you will well it's, you i'm to. a social drinker though like i i don't i like when i draw i like to have a beer too because it yeah. it, 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 it to, to calms you. everything else yeah. out of my head right, right but right. it's this it's the uh I love my boys to death, but man, like I got some of the best drinking friends on the in the game. Oh yeah. And you know, going to Sturgis, I think was the one that really did it for me because that was fourteen days straight every night we got fucked up. Oh, you guys were just getting fucking hammered. Yeah, everywhere we went, like that was the yeah. goal, and it's like I love that about how how was Sturgis? Because I know Michael Ballard called me, and he was like, "Hey, we're gonna do the same with Harley. We're gonna do this. We want to do this big paint offer thing." And then it was like everybody and their motherfuck. Mike was like, dude, you should still come out here. I'm like, well, they're allowing me to fly into Sturgis. I was going to fly into, um, oh, what city is that? Before? Rap Rapid City. Rapid City. Mm -hmm. I was going to fly into Rapid City. And my travel agent goes, nope, if you're there, you have to quarantine for seven days. And I'm like, are you Everybody fucking Everybody fucking does. Dude, it's so that quarantine shit is not, like, it, it, everywhere. I was riding in the New York said, if you're coming in from out of town, yeah. you need a quarantine need for 14 quarantine. days. Yeah, so Ballard who calls me. Who the fuck is going to, who the fuck is there to tell me to do that? Yeah, Ballard called me. He goes, dude, I just landed. He goes, I don't think you're going to have any fucking issues with that. He goes, but man. Let's just fucking chalk it up because we were on short term anyways. Yeah. So it was like, well, yeah, this we're kind of pushing it too close for time this year. So we're going to do it next year. But I saw everybody and I'm like, you motherfucker society. Why are you fucking, like you just said, yeah. scaring people in the tactics? Did you have a fucking blast or what? Yeah, yeah. It, was it seemed awesome. like it would have been the most fun thing ever. Was it less – did you feel like more of a, more of a, a, a normalcy being in society? 100%. In, yeah, it was like this you didn't is have to wear a mask you anywhere. You didn't, uh, right? And, and and then it's like, of course, they were waiting, and they, I, who knows, man, if there was a, a a peak or not. But I think that all the fucking news things saying there was a peak in in cases was bullshit. It's totally scare tactic. Or it's yeah. It, yeah. I hope this me. shit goes. I don't. At this point, I don't give two fucks who wins the presidency. Yeah, just quit it. this bullshit. Totally high five. I'm fucking over yep. it. You and I both. Yeah, you it's know, weird. it's like I'm so I, glad that you went. That I'm so glad that it was that way. When Ballard hit me up about a week ago, he was like, "Dude, it was just nice checking out and being around human beings." And I think even like on this trip, 
It's weird because I've been into some places here. Like when I was in Oklahoma a couple nights ago, there were people freaking out. Like when you put your card in and you're paying for something, they're like spraying it right down away. Yeah. And um, it was weird. Like I'm like, oh, okay. So I see some people taking it to that extreme. And then there's other people that are like, why are you wearing a mask? Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, dude, it, it's all right. So I don't want to see anybody get hurt. I don't want to see anybody, anything. But I just think that it's Man. so fucking nice doing shit like this. Even traveling... I think more people need to take a break. Yeah, I mean, and trust me, it sucks because I built this fucking studio, and then two months later, COVID happens, and nobody's oh, traveling shit. anymore. So, I mean, I've always been pretty – being in Dallas, like, anytime someone's traveling across the country, yeah, it's an incentive for them to take 40 or 20. Right. And, like, right. stop in on the way to something because – Fuck, yeah. Like, say if you're a company in California and you got to go pick up a bike you bought yeah. in Georgia – Come or through. anywhere on the East Coast, like fuck, stop through here, do a podcast, shoot the shit, do something for your business, get a little bit more exposure. Absolutely. So it's, it's always work, but then this yeah. year nobody's fucking traveling. Yeah. And um, it's fun though, man. I mean, even if we don't have a business, I mean, you and I have had enough podcasts for fucking, we could do another 10, but it's rad though, man. I fucking love what you're doing. I love this place, man. I mean, dude, you are fucking doing it. And I think it's a good role model for your family, for your whoever you you know, yeah. inspire down the road. I'm proud of you, dog. You're fucking killing it. So what uh, what do you think is going to, like, change for you guys for next year? I need to pee real quick before we get into that part, but we'll get into, like, whatever you're going to be doing. and then. Uh, yeah, let's take a break. I got to hit the rest. Yeah, that'll work. All right. Just so stoked for you, dude. Yeah, it's <laughs> such an awesome place here. Yeah, a lot of my friends helped me build it, man. Dude, it's beautiful, man. You guys did a great job. Slide over here real quick. So, um, what were you asking? What we're gonna do next? Yeah. So, as like, as far as like pushing in the next year, I know that this year has been kind of a, a hiccup for a lot of things. But I mean, you've still been pumping out colors, colors, the ice colors, pearls, colors, colors, colors. Yeah. I'm coming out with new shit every fucking week. I want to keep it fresh. Keep doing fun stuff. Keep the Payne Huffer community involved in choosing what colors they need. What do they want? Um, I don't know if we're going to start doing some custom paint. I've got some things that I'm working with right now with House of Color, and I'll leave it at this, as that, but I may, you know, drop that soon. I don't know. It's just cool, man. I want to do more classes. We've got some more stuff that we're going to come up on the, um, on with doing um, events. Mm -hmm. Eventually, hopefully, international travel will open up again, and we'll be able to do more of the live art shows. We're still going to do the, the, the live yeah. art stuff. But um, we've got the Dixon thing coming up as well. Try to get that in before the year end. But for 2021, I want to hit it hard again, man. I'm always going to come up with new stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be fun. What um, do you think as far as with the pearls, that's the kind of direction that I'm going to be going into, mm -hmm. more of the ice pearls and stuff like that. I fucking love that, man. We've got some cool companies and stuff that we're working with here in the States is there anything that you see as a custom painter that you need or there's another thing that you would want to go into? That's mm. what I like to ask people like yourself. Like, you know, not just talking like, oh, I want a pearl or whatever, but do you see a certain tone or a certain color that you like to candy over? I look at it that way too, like saturations. Mm -hmm. What are you going to blend stuff into? What are you going to, how are you going to mold a different color? What's going to be underneath that? We just came out with, um, Valley Custom, Silent G's gray. And we did a gray, but it looks badass if you, you know, once you candy over that and blend into that. It's not mm -hmm. just, oh, here's a gray flake. We have a gray flake if you want a standard yeah. one. But I like having stuff like that where it's kind of opens your mind like, oh, you know, I didn't think about that. Let's do this type of, um, you know, black and white, or let's do this heavy saturation on this. And I don't know. I want stuff that's going to make people think on that aspect of it. So well, it's fun. You know, with the champagne flake, uh, Dude, that shit a lot of colors badass. look really good when you shoot over it because you get kind of like a, you know, when you look at anytime you're shooting candy over colors, like the house of color, the OG house of color book mm -hmm. is what you want because all those base colors, like those galaxy gray and, and strato blue and yep. pink, you know, all those things that you get. So when you have a flake that, that kind of mimics one of those base colors, yep. it opens up the possibilities of flaked out candies. Exactly. Right. Yep. Instead of like, you only get the gold or the silver version of that UK, right. you know, two or whatever the hell. Right. Um, but then you get like things like champagne that's like in between silver 
and gold. So you get like a another candy red that you don't really get. It's very no, no. I'm with you. Yeah, totally. it's not that's a why we did it. Difference, yeah. But and I guess that's what I'm leading to now is I think our next one that we should do with you should be a pearl to complement your flake. Well, see, the pearl I wanted was I didn't know you had the grape eight. That's my purple that I've been that yep. I use on everything. Well, fuck Scott. Let's just let's put yeah, your I'm name on my it. Name right? <laughs> we'll just put your name on it. Fast lap. Sorry, Scott. Yeah. So like, like right shirt. there on my helmet, yeah. the that one. It, see how it has the, it. the lightning bolts on the side. That's yep. that's it. That's it, man. That's it. Well, but the pearls are good, man. Like I use that gold pearl a lot. I use the white angel dust a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, now that I know that that purple, that grape ape, is uh, the purple that I used to use. Not that it's the same, but it's it's similar to it's one similar. I use right, to yeah. the old PPG one I was using. Yeah. The way that I got into the Pearl thing was is my contact, I, I won't say her name, but she's the daughter of the old Murano family, mm -hmm. and that's where she is now. So it's a company that actually acquired the Murano family, and she got into it. But that was something when Scott and I first started testing, he was like, how the hell did you do that? It was just, you know us working with them and developing a relationship and getting it. But now we've got even more. You and I talked about some ice pearl stuff. I think we should do something like that. We could talk, you know, more about that. I think that direction would be some fun, but man, just colors, just having fun with it. Just keep on going. You know, we having new stuff and having, I mean, it's like a Rubik's cube, right? You can do so many different color combinations in this world and developing stuff and bringing stuff out. I want to well, keep when it, you, when keep you come up with colors and, and I don't think flake is ever going to go away. It, it's obviously never going away since the no. beginning of custom yeah. paint. No, it'll but, always be around. You know, I think that like like anything, it, it's been kind of saturated and everybody doing flaked out this, flaked totally. out that. So yes. having the pearls as an option to kind of give paint a different, um, uh, like kind of a, its own trick more mm -hmm. or less, yeah. rather than just being black or just being gray or whatever the case may be. Right. Um, I mean, it just opens up the door. So, like, another thing too that we're starting to do is we're starting to get a lot of custom requests. So, yeah. I want to get to the point to that, so where people can call us. I had a guy call me the other day, and he's like, "Hey, man, I need this, this, and this." So I'm like, "Yeah, we can make it happen." Now, what they don't understand is behind the scenes, the factory has to cut an allotted amount. We have to go in through. We have to color match. It's a whole process to make that polyethylene terethate film, it's, there's a lot that goes behind the scenes. It's not just me calling up my manufacturer and going, hey, we need this color, let's run this amount. There's you know, definitely due diligence that goes behind the scene. So if we can make it to where we're more of a custom factory where people can go, because we get that all the time, hey, can you color match this or can you color match it? And I'm like, well, I have this color which will be close to it, but if you candy it, a lot of people don't even realize, like even the beginner painters, what candy does and toning and you're working with toners and how you can make different effects. So I think that's where I would like to do that. The classes, when they come out, I want to show them enough to get them off the ground and because we get so many questions on Paint Hub for every minute. Like, yeah, how do I do this? How do I do this? So the next step, which you asked for 2021, we're hitting YouTube hard. Mm -hmm. So YouTube is going to be the next thing. If you want to learn something, it's going to get people to really, I can just say, hey, look, go check out the channel. You know what I mean? We just did that two months ago. You can see exactly the process and that allows them, I can sit there and type it out, the whole explanation if I wanted to, but mm -hmm. fuck that. You know, I'd rather just have them go look at it that yeah. way. So, but I want to still keep the live art shows going. We have a blast with those. It's fun. Get people out. Meet people that, I think you can learn so much more in person with somebody else mm -hmm. versus just talking to them over the phone from afar. Yeah. You know, when you really get to see what they're about and everything that's into it, it's just much more appreciative, you know? So I like that. But um, classes are a blast, man. That's a fun thing to get away. I don't, I don't know, man. I want to do some stuff. Matt and Tim and I were talking too. They want to do something like the airbrush art circus type of th type of flavor, but we want to, we got some ideas. We want to kick it up more and do something for the airbrush artists because I love airbrush art. Yeah. I love it. Like, let's take flake out of the game. Let's take pearls out of the game. Just having airbrush art is fucking badass. Mm -hmm. When you have true artists that way and see stuff like that, you guys, I'm just like, holy shit. And I come from that. You know what I mean? So yeah. I get that. When I see you do a portrait, I see you do a piece. I don't know, man. I'd like to bring that back. I don't want to bring back tribal flames, but I want to bring back some airbrush yeah. into the paints. If we can see that come into it, Let's do it. Let's do some more. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Maybe you could do something that would be the next part of it. You know what I mean? 
don't yeah. know. I don't know, man. It's a uh, it's it's so up and down. Because it is timing, though. Like you like we touched on earlier. There's a lot of time that goes into that. Yeah, and I mean, I like to, you know, I, I have a price range that I do like so like to to give you an idea of time, right? Mm -hmm. When I do a helmet, it's fifteen hundred bucks. Yep. I only have that option. Sure. There's not like a less or more. It's fifteen hundred bucks, and it's basically an allotted amount of time right. that I spend on the helmet. And I'm not sandbagging. I'm not doing this. It's like I want this helmet to be as badass as possible. Sure. So I'll spend a week on it if I have to. Right. So when they want a portrait on it, the next price is two grand. Perfect. So I'm basically charging them five hundred dollars to airbrush. Yep. But it can take somewhere between five hours yep to two days so sure. 16 17 hours sure so the ones that have taken a long time right you know if i'm trying to base everything i do art wise off like a hundred dollars an hour then i'll be getting probably four thousand dollars per helmet mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. which is funny because you'll get a tattoo i'll 100 spend 100 bucks an hour, 120 bucks an hour easily yeah so i think and it's hard too because people will say that like when i give them a message back and i'm like hey man how much to do my whole dyna and i'm like Five grand, six grand, seven grand, you're in there, oh, whoa, 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 man, I've got a thousand bucks. Like, that's the most I would ever spend on that. Cool. You don't understand all the cost of materials. Yeah. That's what you're not getting as a basic consumer. So a lot of new it. painters I know, they deal with this a lot, and they complain about this a lot. Right. Right? They, right. they say, oh, man, how do you get people to pay you? I'm like, yeah. you stop taking those thousand dollar jobs. Right. Just cut that shit out. Because when you yeah. when you accept that job, then you let the people know that there's people out there willing to do that at that right. price. Yeah, exactly. If you like working for two bucks an hour, and believe you me, you will be working for two bucks a fucking hour, yeah. plus your cost of goods that doesn't go into that, and you're going to cheap out and use cheap material, and then they're going to come back and bitch at you to fix it again. So now this job that cost you 500 bucks because you were Mr. fucking Walmart is going to cost you 10 times that amount because you have to fix it over and over or and over. Or you're going to be on some Dynaholics page getting bitched out. For, and then you're done. Yeah, and then, and you, then have a, you, you have a run reputation on totally. trying to do something for free damn right. near for somebody. I would say to somebody starting out, if you really want to start out, go work your, your basic job. High five. That's what we all did. Yeah. Do something that's fucking mind-blowing. And if it takes you five times to do that helmet or five times to do that tank or that canvas or whatever, keep, you know, Set it back down and do it again. Do it again, do it again. Come out with something that's just shock and awe. I've always told people, it's like, instead of focusing on being able to do all this wild, crazy shit, just focus on quality, finish work, and paint I, work. I totally agree. And because, if, you, if you have that down, yep. you will always have a clientele. Yes. And you're talking, you know what, Brandon Walker, he is the guy that, he pretty much started Paint Huffer with me. He painted for Jesse James. And we had a lady that wanted to buy a panel one time that he finished out, and Ron Hernandez striped it. And Brandon and I were talking one night, and I said, hey, this lady wants to buy this panel. She's got the money. She, she agreed to the price. She's going to buy it. And he's like, I'm not done yet. I'm like, dude, this is fucking flawless. I paint. I, I can see that. He's like, I'm not putting my name on it yet. I'm not letting it go. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Stop being so fucking anal. Let, let's let this go. And he didn't. And what happened was I called the lady a couple days later. I was like, hey, Brandon's not ready to release it yet. She's like, okay, I'm going to hold off right now. We're going to wait. So we fast forward about two years. Brandon shows up at my shop and he goes, now it's done. And I was like, whoa, what the fuck, dude? I'm like, yeah, it looks amazing, dude, but it took you fucking two years to finish this panel? He says, no, dude. He goes, just never put your name on something unless you know in your heart it's 100%. And I yeah. was like, man, I have so much respect for that. And he goes, yeah, it's yours. Hang it up. So it's in my office when you walk in. Yeah. It just meant so much to me. But it's like that thing. I've had some stuff that's come to me lately that's been really nicely painted, but there's still some finish work that has to be done on it. There's yeah. a drip mark or there's a studge on there. And I'm like, dude, you should have took the time, man. You should have mm -hmm. took the time. You're, no one's there to speak for you on that behalf. So I see what you're saying. You can, I'm saying shock it on with your artwork. Come out with your best artwork possible. If you want to build up your name quickly, but yeah. your right quality is everything, man. Cleanliness is next to godliness. It's the yeah. old saying. That's so fucking true, dude. Yeah. Agree. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like... You know, if you do a nice, clean paint job, it'll it'll take you a lot further than doing a wild one. You know, and uh, yeah, because quality attracts uh, quality, right? Nice. So when you do quality work, so that for instance, my my career path when I was younger, I was shock and awe and not quality. Uh, 
Okay. So not saying so, that I l- would leave a run in the middle of a panel, right? But maybe on the edge, on the backside. Oh, you don't sure. see that part. Yeah, it's but gonna then, be hanging on the wall. Yeah, or, yeah. or something like that. So right. you you don't fully go through with those things, mm-hmm. or you know, th- there's a lot of different aspects, right? Sure. But once I started slowing down, taking my time, yep. doing it this way, making sure everything goes out like glass. Right. And I'm still I still miss things here and there. I'm not perfect. Well, you're human. But and stuff's gonna pinch back too. You're gonna see whatever come back a couple days later. Well that's the thing is that like you have to counteract that. You have to be positioned in your shop to where you can paint something and be done. Yes. And it can sit there for two weeks and you have to be financially able to do that so that it can sink back and you can buff it and it leaves your shop right. Hundred percent. Instead of buffing it the next day after you clear it and it looks great at your shop. But then by the time you get to the bike shop to drop it off, it's fucked up. Yep. You know and it's it's the thing too is what we were just talking about too. Now that you're the Fast Life Garage and now that you have the Fast Life Podcast, you can't just fuck off and do basic shit. As your own person, you want to take it to the next fucking level and you want to one-up what you did like a year ago. Like you were talking about the portraits and stuff. Now, I can't wait to see what you're going to do even fucking next year. But I think you're at the point now or I I can kind of see just being your friend and whatever just knowing you i can kind of see now where you're going to be really selective on the jobs you don't have to oh, sit already there have been, yeah, man. right Hugely. to where it's going to be fun for you and you're going to be able to take it to that next one right you're going to be like holy shit like i really want to do something up so i think that's cool and that's the way to get to that's what everybody dreams to yeah get i mean to. like you can't you know because of the travel schedules that i usually carry every year and everything going on like i can't accept all the work that's out there i have to pick and choose the best opportunities yeah. to shine, right? You know, and so that means I'm probably going to be more choosy on the jobs that are yep. way more in my wheelhouse rather than trying. But even to if shit. you had to charge another five hundred dollars to do a portrait type of work, I think there's people out there. If you got that budget, yeah, you got so it. You got to be compassionate. You got to understand. What happens is, you know, like say the helmets, man. The reason why I don't want to, I already feel like they're high, but mm-hmm. compared to other helmet painters, they're well, not. No, they're not. Yeah. But I also want people to have it. Yeah. You know, you don't want like, to make it. You don't want to make it out of their fucking. I don't range. want. I don't want to be some elite thing. Like, yeah. oh, a fast life helmet's a four thousand dollar helmet. It's like, right. I don't want it to be the Louis Vuitton. Right. I want it to be something people. It costs enough money that they respect it. That's right. You know what I mean. That's right. They but can, it's still they can appreciate your time and yeah. your your calories burned behind the scene. And yeah. that's what I love, man. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I've, you know. <laughs> COVID, you know, if I want to use COVID as an excuse, I've had a lot of helmets for a long time this year, yeah. you know, and uh, so, but I'm thankful that all of them are cool and they're being patient with me. Yeah. You know, I think people will. And, you know, like, and, and that's, that's something I'm very, very thankful for because as soon as they start flipping out, then it puts me in a weird place where I don't want to do the job. No. So they, for them, yeah. it sucks. Right. Because then they, they can't bitch at me because I'm just going to give them their shit back. Right. But, you know, like it's it's a tough one because, like I said, I uh, I you know I didn't plan to go to New York. That happened, yeah. but it was an opportunity I didn't want to pass up, and I and I would have hate I, w- I would have hated to pass that up based on the fact that some dude wanted his helmet back, and I had to go home to please that one guy. Yep. You know, rather than like, look, man, like, I'm, if I have to come home to do your helmet because you don't want to wait two more weeks, yeah, then yeah. I'm gonna come back and be kind of pissed, right? You know, and you it sucks. working on that. Yeah, exactly. It's the other thing line. that I like doing too, yeah. man, I like just painting shit and selling it. It's like I'm starting to realize that I, I that I could paint helmets that, that that all out badass stuff, and then just put it up for sale. And you're talking about the yeah, the, I've seen you do that recently with the priest. I've stuff. done it with cheap shit, like so. Yeah. Like I've and I say cheap, but I've done it to where like I you know like Simpson will send me an extra helmet or two, and I have like two mediums, yep. right? Yep. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna flake this helmet out and throw a pinstripe design and sell for a thousand bucks. There you go. Cool. Yep. Well, what I'm talking about is I'll do like an all-out badass helmet. Right. It's a large helmet. Yep. It's three thousand dollars. Yep. And I think that I could probably sell them. Absolutely, you could. But yeah, I would like to do that because I like customers having direction and giving me like. A direction to go with their paint job right but you don't want them calling you the minute they get back from dropping it off and go are you done yet all my are customers are cool and they don't do that right thank but god I, what i want to do is like i also like the fact that every time i sketch something mm-hmm. when i send it to them it's i'm stoked about what i sketched yeah so i'm not really 
I am asking for their approval. But you're but not just checking. You're not just cashing. I'm in. more like, hey, man, this is what I want to do with your bike or I'm your, your paint job. This yeah. is. I see this now. Yep. I just want to give you a heads up of where I'm planning on taking this. Right. And when they are on board and let me roll with it, then I'm it's stoked. But the good thing about myself is. I don't have to go through that little small anxiety part of wondering if this is going to be okay or is not. Is this okay or whatever? And I think, yeah. too, with having that Wacom tablet, that helps That helped me so much when I can draw up tattoo stuff. Because I tell my clients, I was like, hey, look, I'm drawing this for you one time. It's all the time that I have allotted for. I don't, I can't sit there and do all these revisions. It's going to happen one time, and that's it. Because in the very beginning, I would have the person who was so excited, they go home, and, hey, man, I want to do this, want to do this, want to do this. Right now, we're working with um, SE Bikes. We're working with a lot of like big like tech companies that way. And I've got guys that are old BMX legends, right? And a buddy of mine now, like I have so much respect for this dude. He was a top dog guy back in the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Mike calls me up, and he's like, hey, man, I want to do this on my frame, and I want to do this. And I'm like, Mike, shut the fuck up. Stop fucking calling me. You're yeah. not going to you're not going to have your hand in this, dog. Well, my sister my sister drew up this and my daughter drew up this and I want to throw this into it and everything. I'm like, "Nope. You yeah. came to me for a reason. You're going to trust me on this. Like, look, we're going to do this. Awesome." And Mike, I fucking love him, but he's that type of guy where he's so creative that he wants his hand in it too. And I'm well, like, there's no, a there's a painter that. for that for that guy. There is. You know, there's a painter that that maybe hasn't developed their own niche yet. Yep. And they're more willing to, to tackle a lot of different types of things, and that's yeah. that's the thing that I that, that I've come to. Yeah, it's yeah. like when you're when you're young, you think that you have to grab every. You, you feel like you're in that little machine with the fucking bills everywhere, and you got to grab everything in the air. Right. Right. Oh, I was there. Yeah, that's Everybody. what it feels like. Yeah, but in, yeah. real, in, in real in in real in retrospect, you get out of that yep. and you start you start taking in the jobs that fit you the best. Right. The exactly. customers that fit you the best. Yes. The the relationships totally. that work the best. And now it's like I have this I most of the customers that I have that I've actually gone through with like start to finish, yeah, come back for something else. That's right. You know, That's and they right. hey, what do I have? What do you got right now of mine? I'm like, ah, oh, I got one more helmet of yours. All right, uh, put me down for a bike in next April and uh, let's do two more helmets. Yep. And it, what's it's awesome, but it's also like, well fuck, man, like Right. What about these other people that don't, don't get a chance yet? Because yeah. this one guy's got nine helmets. This dude's right. got five helmets. For sure. So yeah. it's it's dope to have a like ten customers that are constantly f feeding yeah, bang, shit. Bang. Yeah, just hang them out. Yeah, but then, you know what right. I mean. So it's like well, there's people like me. Like I'll wait. You know what I mean. Like yeah, I know they, we talked about it, and I know like I'm like, hey, homie, what the fuck, dude? You got fucking ten helmets going on, dog. Like what the hell? But I'm not that guy. Yeah. I I understand people's. I'm an artist, you know what I mean? I get that, you know what yeah. I mean? I understand that. I'm like, dude, I could care less. I, if I really want to help it from Jace, I'd go buy one and send it to you and be like, here, here's a thousand bucks deposit. Those are the people you know are going to be serious. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? I'd be like, hey, man, here, do it. I used to tell people that all the time, too. I'm like, you know what? Put your money down. You know, stop talking about it. Just be about it. You know, I think like that's... I, like I tell every man, 40 helmets a year is about all I can do. Fuck, dude, that's a lot. It, it's it's a lot, but it's not. If, you, if I do four helmets a month, yeah, that's more than 40 helmets a year. Right. All right, so yeah. four helmets a month, that's basically one helmet a week. It's yep. doable, it is. right? Yep. So it's a good thing, but I usually have 40 requests a month. Easily. Like 40 people that are down to do it. Right, right. It, yeah. it's, it, it gets so hard to tell people no right. a lot. Right, yeah. That part sucks. Yeah, I can appreciate you know? that for sure. And you know, I don't want yeah. to be booked out for a year. Yeah, I was just going to say, we're talking about having more time to go on your road trips and to do all that. Not only go on your road back. trips, I don't want to be nailed. Yeah. Like, I want, I don't want to be nailed into what I was doing a year ago. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you're like trying if, to progress. Not, yeah, you're yeah, trying to progress. But like that dude scheduled to do a helmet paint job when I was doing more of this style. Sure. And I've evolved more to this style now. Yeah. But he's not really on board with that. So I'd, I would rather keep things at a three-month span. That's why I stopped yeah, taking just, it. Yeah, I stopped taking it work this year. That's smart. Uh, so that next year, like like come December, mm -hmm. I will start opening up the door for next year. Okay. But I'm going to do everything I can to have a real strict schedule paint-wise. Yeah. So nobody's waiting more than three months. Cool. I think that's a perfect time. You, you know, know what I mean? That makes it's sense. It's like starting over, right? Yeah. Like instead of having... Instead of in December, I should be caught up with just about everything. Right. And then I, I usually, I'm trying to leave January open for all the homies and yeah. all the, you know, I'm still making money painting stuff, sure. but it's like, I want to get all the friends and all the uh, sponsorships and all this shit out of the way. Yeah. 
so that and February, to March, April, I, I'm through. back in doing work again. That's smart, man. So. That's a smart way to walk that out. Yeah, you got it. That's I'm proud of you, man. That's well, a fucking good way to do it. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up then. Where are we at? Three. We're at three hours? Yeah. What the fuck, dude? Time flies. Holy it goes shit. quickly. It does. <laughs> it goes fast, dude. It feels like we've been maybe talking an hour. Yeah, it yeah. goes quick, man. It's uh, I got so many fucking podcasts this month to release. What are you going to do next? With what? what? You have more podcasts? No, not tonight, you? man. I'm. It's been a fucking wild weekend, man. Yeah, you had, you had a we, party we Friday. On? Yeah, we're still on. Oh, okay. Right on. Good deal. We had a party Friday. You and had then, a party here? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because uh, my buddy that was at the house last night when you came through, mm -hmm. he was supposed to be here Friday night. Mm. But he didn't get here till yesterday morning. Oh, that's what and he then, did. Yeah, right, yeah, and right, then right. you know, so we were planning on just getting fucked up Friday night. Yeah, instead of got fucked up Friday night, then woke back up at ten a.m. or nine a.m. and I was right. back here at the shop at, at ten thirty doing a podcast, Holy drinking, shit. drinking again, drinking again, <laughs> right? And then you know, like after you left my house last night, I was, I was ready to check out i was tired yeah i could tell and yeah, then i had a spent. second wind and i went back yeah. outside and drunk again till two in the morning oh shit and so you guys did it up yeah, yeah now now i'm just kind of fucking <laughs> i did seven hours on the road again i rode down to austin and everybody's like dude you're crazy because i usually do about like i've been doing about five to seven a day mm -hmm. but today i was like when you and i talked last i was like no nah, i'm gonna stay again i'm gonna stay again i'm gonna rest tomorrow i'm supposed to go to lubbock which is five hours and then either way, I'll go either on the 20 or on the 40 and mm -hmm. then go back home that way. But I don't mind traveling. Yeah. Like, I'm good with it. I love it. Like, it's cool. Like, everybody's like, dude, you're, you're going to wear yourself out. I'm like, yeah, but it's the worth. You know what I mean? Like, I got an hour yeah. ride back tonight, but it's not bad. I don't yeah. know, man. Are you one of those types? Like, did you always like to just to go as well? Like, yeah, are you always yeah. good on the road? I mean, obviously. I, I, I like to do road trips. I, I'd rather... I'd rather travel in a car than an airplane any day. Oh, yeah. You know, but... You see more. I used to live on a plane, man. Yeah, I so, you know, I, my listeners probably tired of me hear, hearing about it, but, like, when I was going back and forth to NorCal, mm -hmm. it was, like, five flights a month, which I know is not shit compared to a lot of people, but... It's still a lot. It's like, man, it's like, fuck, I'm back on a plane, back on a plane, back on a plane. It was cool for the convenience of yeah. getting there, getting something done, getting home. Just being airlifted, going there, work, and go. Are you going out to, like, Comington? Are you doing any more jobs like that uh, this year? Well, probably not till next year. Probably... Once I, I don't mean Dave, but I mean like other styles. Like, because I thought that was no. kind of cool. Like, you're doing was that just more of a friendly helping him out type of a no? I mean, I, I'm down to do more of that, but um, well, I know you and I talked about it too. Maybe one, I just got to figure out like it's all about figuring out the, the a way of doing things that's uh, that works, right? Well, it's gonna be fun, right? Like, you know, like if we do something at Payne Huffer, it would be like a job that you'd come out. Well, I've had people paint. reach out and want me to come to, like, somebody was up in Boston wanted me to come paint some baggers up there. And I'm like, I'm down to do that. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I do, I'm real fast when I do that. Because when I'm out of town, mm -hmm. I have nothing, I have no distractions. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm there at 730 in the morning, which I definitely am not here. You can just rock And out. I'm fucking there till 730 and I get shit done all day because I, I don't have friends coming by the shop. Right. Uh, I'm not. You know, my, I'm not trying to figure out what for, what's for dinner with my wife. For you know sure. what I'm saying? So there's yeah. like a lot of things that yeah. are out of the way, so I get shit done quick. And that's the only reason why I did my bike so quick before Sturgis is because I went to Covington's and I painted two bikes that I was very very proud of. Oh, you did that there? Yeah, in seven oh, days. Shit. Okay, so I was like, I just thought you did it just because of Sturgis. I was like, okay, he's just burning the calories. No, no, I did their burning bikes, the, but yeah. I I did them. I did two badass paint jobs in seven days. Damn. And then, so I was like, "There's, I've got to be able to do that here. Here. So you just came home with that due diligence and just. Yeah. And I just like, all right, I can you. I knock a, out a full paint job in a week? Now, okay. my bike needs to be buffed. I haven't buffed it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, right. things like that. But yeah. it's still sweet. It's yeah. good stuff, man. It's fucking rad. I think, um, yeah, having that thing about having friends come by, we have that at Paint Huffer. A lot of times people are like, hey, man, you guys grilling out tonight? You're going to have this tonight? Or can I come by and check out these? And I'm like, I now set up to where I have resources that are like pulling all the orders behind the scenes and doing all the facilitations to where I can be a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. But it's a hard thing where people people don't understand that like I got a job. It's a fun job. Mm -hmm. But it's a job. Like, I have to be there, and I have to work out, and I can't just, you know, oh, you own your business. You can just go fuck off. And I'm like, 
oh, no, 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 no. Like I'm there at 10 o'clock in the morning sharp. I'm here. I have to do this. And there's days where you can fluctuate a little bit. But people that want to come hang out and just chill and mm-hmm. drink beers all the time, those are times I'm like, okay, Saturday night, we'll save it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. I finally have to put my Well, that's what we do too. That. But like I said, I have uh, – when my, my apprentice was here, mm-hmm. uh, more people would come here every day. Yeah. But now that now that he's not really here, like yeah. I have a lot like all day, like I I actually enjoy it quite a bit because yeah I just you know get it done I do everything when I want to do it I'm not like hey you ready for lunch blah 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 so right yeah. cool I like having those schedules though sometimes man you know I what I mean too. like having like going to lunch is I, a cool thing I do it every you know day what I mean I think there's something with us like you said like we and this will be a good way to wrap this up when we first started talking about that like driving to your shop mm-hmm. stopping at the quick trip. Getting your monster on for the day or whatever, saying yeah. hi to the people in there, it's some part of, part of normalcy now that I really miss, and I love this, like being able yeah. to travel and come out from there. But yeah, man, um, don't be surprised if I roll back through. Seriously, yeah, I'm gonna go get my bike, man, and just <laughs> I gotta get out before we get into winter time. So it's fun, man. Thank you, brother. Cool. I appreciate you having me again, man. This is fun. It's a great place. I'm beyond stoked for you, man. It's a good time. All right. Appreciate it, Brian. Thank you, brother. Hell yeah. Really hope you guys enjoyed that podcast. Want to thank Brian for making the trip out here and, uh, you know, blessing us with his presence. If you guys want to support this podcast, there's a few ways you could do it. You can start by supporting the podcast by donating to our Patreon, which helps us bring on more guests and build the quality of the show. And that's at patreon.com forward slash fast life garage. We do release, uh, we do put on content on there that we do not release normally. Not a lot, but there's usually something like one or two a month that we'll be dropping on there. Also, check out our sponsors, Dream Rides John on Instagram, TeamDreamRides.com, Paint Huffer Metal Flake on Instagram, and PaintHuffer.com. Fast Life 25 gets you 10% off on their website. Thundermax EFI on Instagram and ShopTMax.com. And Fast Life saves you 10% off their amazing products. Lexan Moto on Instagram and Lexan-Moto.com saves you 15% off when you use Fast Life at checkout. Simpson Motorcycle Helmets on Instagram and Simpson Motorcycle Helmets.com. Electric Lighting Co. on Instagram and Nam's Custom Cycle Products.com for some badass lighting. Also, FL2020 saves you shipping. Check out all our sponsors, please. Follow them on Instagram. Reach out to them if you're interested in their products. Let them know you heard about them on this podcast. And if you can, rate and review the podcast on your platforms. That way it reaches more people. So thank you for everything you do do by simply just listening. It lets me know that this podcast is going somewhere. So thank you for all that. And we will be back in about one day with Bill Rodenzel, who works at the HD Museum. He uh, gave me a a nice little private tour of the entire thing. And uh, we had a great conversation afterwards. And I'm really looking forward to releasing the rest of the podcast that we got done on this best on this last trip to uh, Milwaukee and New York. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you back on the next one. Peace.